Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me, as always, for the last time for a month, Mason, yes, go on. because we're going to refuse to look at each other, aren't we, for a month? That's exactly We'll hang right. out, but we will not be looking or talking. <laughs> That's right. We'll be engaging in our own separate hobbies. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I'm going to build a Nick, model ship in a boat. Nick, Nick Mason, by the way. Who, Nick who, Mason, builder of model ships in boats. Soon to be. Wait. Model ship in a bottle. I don't know what a model ship in a boat is. Well, you just you get I've on a said. boat and you, you build a smaller oh, boat. that's great. Yeah. What a holiday. Yeah. Oh, you know? that's, yeah, that'd, that'd be great. Would it be a model of the boat that you're on? I say no. Yeah, I was thinking initially yes, but no would be funnier and people would always be like, hey, maybe because there are other people <laughs> on the boat. I'm on a big cruise ship. I'm getting diseases on a cruise ship. Good, good, and good. People, and people are just like, why don't you do one of the cruise ship? I'm like, no, no, I won't. I want to do a better boat. You can actually get one in the gift shop. I'm like, I, I brought this from home. <laughs> Because I'm strange. Yeah. All my luggage is just model ships that I'm going to build on this <laughs> ship. Right. Anyways. What are you going to do for a hobby while you're uh, – uh, we're, we're planning a trip away. Oh. Uh, we're going to just um, – I'm going to – I'm going to – I am going to work. I'm going to do some – try and figure out some other stuff that I want Big to mistake. do. Yeah, but not like the regular stuff <laughs> that we do. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. Anyways, we'll talk about that in a sec because it is Big Comic Con w- uh, Week, Mason. Woo! <laughs> That's right. We're going to be ranking everything's by woos, right? Aren't That's we, right. Mason? And let me tell you, there's some big woos and some very disappointed booing going on. And there's on. a one very specific woo, a Jimmy woo. That's Jimmy true. Woo. Jimmy, Jimmy true. woo. You're in Jimmy <laughs> true. Um, yeah. So, if folks, if you're out there and you're like, well, these guys are going a little break, I'm, I'm hoping for like a very subtle, smooth transition to, to you know, a little break. Not happening, woos. No, woos all that's episode. right, exactly. This is high energy, high octane all the time. Mm. Anyway, Until we run out of gas. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Anyways, uh, if you do want to skip to anything in particular, the time code's below. But we're going to be talking about a uh, a recent Rolling Stone article where it said that Zack Snyder was a, was was like a Lex Luthor wreaking havoc. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to go through that. Uh, we're also going to talk about news of- He mo- poisoned the water supply. <laughs> no, that's more a joke, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to be talking. Um, he discovered Superman's secret identity, and he's like Superman's Clark Kent. And everybody's like, "Yeah, man, we know." And fictional. Mm. <laughs> so, m- news of Mortal Kombat two. Oh, but another one. Mm. Uh, trailers for Halloween ends. John Wick, Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to be talking about some reactions to Prey. This is all Comic Con stuff from mm-hmm, here on out. Mm-hmm. Berserker, Star Trek, Marvel animation. DC, and then the MCU panel, which as a recording, this literally just wrapped up. If you do want to uh, jump to anything, please feel free to do so. But yeah, as mentioned, we're taking a break. However, bigsandwich.co, which is like our private page, it's Patreon. It's Patreon. So what you do- <laughs> I feel like you keep saying that, but, I, but, but I, I, got, I get this sense that like Patreon would have something to say about that. They can die in a ditch, mate. Wow. Well, I also have, we also have Patreon. We also have but Patreon, uh, there's more stuff true. on this. Yeah. So basically- but I'm saying we may not have it for much longer. Like they may shut us down if we keep going like, this is Patreon. No, actually. like Patreon. Okay, right, right, it's right, Patreon-esque. Right. Mm. So we basically put up a bunch of exclusive bonus stuff there if you do want to- if you do want to keep listening to any of this stuff, we've got, for example, a Predator commentary has just gone up for the first Predator. Yeah. There's a Doctor Strange 2 commentary going up during the month as well. We do a uh, we do a podcast on clickbait called We Got We Got This Covered Covered, where That's we go correct. through the best and worst clickbait of the times. We also do time crapsules. We're looking at 1986 in particular, and we're going to have a couple of book clubs. That's right. Uh, where we go through comic books and be like, is this good? And most of <laughs> we're like, yeah, this is pretty good. But every now and then we're like, like this is ooh. bad. Every now and then one of us says to the other one, why'd you make me read this? Yeah, this I didn't is like 12 this. issues long. And uh, really... But also, if you can't get enough of that, yeah. if that's not enough, uh, this week I'm on an episode of Confessions of the Idiots. <gasps> friend of the show, Sam Peterson, Great has a show. podcast where he talks, uh, where he, he explains to some guests. So he, read, he reads out some online confessions, often from Reddit.com. Yep. They're all horrible people and we yep. make fun of them. So it was myself and uh, Sydney comedian Marcel Ablanche de Wilt. And we had a it's grand delightful. old time. Terrific yeah. stuff. So there you go. Also, there's going to be some stuff from Big Sandwich, some older stuff going up in the, this main feed. Main feed. That you're listening to this in. If you are so inclined. All right, should we get into it, Mason? Nah. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Just kidding, Mason. Rolling Stone, they released a scathing report, Mason. Uh-oh. I'm a, there's a bit of information here, so I'm just going to go through it. Feel free to stop me at any point, okay, okay. and be like, I have a question about that particular okay, thing. Right, right. Okay, so this is- All right, ga- stop. <laughs> Rolling Stone, the magazine. Yes. They still publish the magazine? Well, I guess it was a it was an online publication, but I think do they do. they? Yeah. I don't know. Is that relevant? No, but you said if you have any questions. <laughs> Sorry, if you have relevant questions. Oh, then I won't have any relevant <laughs> questions. <laughs> 
As mentioned, they, it says in the article, the headline that, 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 that's been floating around was Zack Snyder was like a Lex Luthor wreaking havoc. So this all started apparently. So when in, Uncle Fester farted. Very good, thank you. Where in 2016, after the release of Batman v Superman, uh-huh. apparently he used a marketing team to drum up support for that movie because it okay. was savaged by critics and it was had a very mixed reception. I don't recall that at all. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that's not that's not insane. Like, yeah. everybody uses it. You know, it's, that's it, it's the only interesting part there, I think, is that he himself used, I guess, his own money to, yes. to, to market it as opposed to studio money. Yeah, exactly. So then from then on, right, he, uh, he, he went on board for, uh, he obviously was, he was already in line to do Justice League like uh-huh. it was happening. So he pretty much went, after that BVS came out, he went straight into filming that. I don't, I don't know if you remember that, but executives apparently hated all cuts of Justice League, oh, no. deemed it a disaster, a full-on failure. And they had plans very early on to replace both Affleck and Cavill and that's, of course, when Whedon stepped in sure. initially to offer, like, notes and how to, like, maybe tweak this to make it, I guess, more like the Avengers. Sure, yeah. Uh, but then, uh, obviously, his his daughter then passed away, so Whedon stepped in mm. full time. Apparently the notes, though, that he gave to Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder was not very receptive to, which I can also understand. Somebody should fall on boobs. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it'll be me. That's right. So Snyder apparently then, uh, it's interesting also that they plan to replace Affleck and Cavill. Cavill we'll talk about later. Yeah, right. Because uh, we might have, oh, we've got a couple of scoops this episode, don't we, Mason? Maybe we do, yeah. or non-scoops. Or who's non-scoops, to say? yeah. So Snyder apparently said. With whom, though, at what, like at that stage of the, of, the, of the process? I think they're just like, this isn't working, kill everything. I think <laughs> that was their plan. Uh-huh. Uh, so Snyder sent one of his editors to the studio to retrieve hard drives that contained materials from Justice League. Oh, that's a real heist. I agree. He uh, he was asked to return them considering they were studio property. He balked, mm. Mason. You're going to have to dress as a janitor and sneak in there and <laughs> stick him in your little janitor's cart? Now, apparently the campaign that started uh, of released the... Oh, no, the guards have seen us. We have to pretend to kiss <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> no, it's just a couple kissing. We're not stealing anything. That's boom, 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 boom. fine. Uh, so the campaign, though, the, the campaign to release the Snyder cult with the Cut was bolstered by bots. Well, Snyder, it was Snyder Cult, you said. That's Freudian slip. Well, no, James. no, that's what people are saying. Yeah. That's what, you know, that's what, that was, that's what they're called, Mason. Mm. And it's true. Yeah. Like, um, I don't, <laughs> do you want me to shy away from absolute truth, Mason? Yes. Okay. How, we just want a nice fun time for everyone. You're right. So it was implied also that in the article that perhaps, and this was more of an implication, there was a five thousand, there was a fifty thousand dollar a day billboard that went up in Hollywood okay. for release of Snyder Cut, along with like a plane with a banner flying. I remember, the, I remember the the banner, yeah. And seeing as there was no fundraising, there was the article was a bit like, who gave this money over? Yeah. Whose money was this? Right, okay, sure. And it doesn't say Snyder, but it's kind of like. You know who else is? Yeah, yeah it leaves the gap. There. What other deranged millionaire is there? It's just be like, you know what? I'm I'm a real estate millionaire, but actually, what I really want is for the Snyder Cut to come out. So I'm going to pay for this billboard. Exactly. They're also talking about how the campaign for, for all that Justice League stuff was bolstered by bots, and they apparently were something like 13 percent of the accounts were bots, which is apparently a lot more than normal when something goes viral. Yeah, but right. it's still there's still a lot of real people out there, like it's actively very true. involved. With you this. can't avoid them. If you go <laughs> no. out there. That's right. So you're saying that the the uh, the number one cheer moment of all time, yeah, the Flash enters the Speed Force, yes, was perhaps not legit. Yes, that's wow. right. Yeah, well, that wow. and just the campaign in general. You all know what that hashtags. means? We can do it again next year. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise, like that, you know, that was kind of a dead end. Because if somebody, if they say the best movie cheering scene of all time ever yeah. was that scene, can't. Well, it'd never work again. Well, they'd have to disqualify it because I feel like they could just do it again. Yeah, they'd have to disqualify <laughs> Justice League in its entirety. Then that would end up being like a scene from the zombie heist one or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's also said that aside from that campaign being bolstered by bots. Uh, Snod- a bot bolstering. Uh, thank you. Snyder said that they are actually were using him to launch their streaming service, HBO Max. Mm-hmm. So he's like, well, any, if anything, like you guys are me of anything. So anyway, it was greenlit. <laughs> Matt, you, my, my, me, more like you. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Up. Just saying. So anyway, it was greenlit for HBO Max. Uh, yeah. And he also insisted that, that there was no new footage needed. He also, Snyder, confronted an executive at the studio in the post-production department and issued a threat. Jeff and John are dragging their feet on taking their names off the cut, as in uh, Jeff Johns and John Berg. Mm. And now I will destroy them on social media. 
So after four months of a fan siege targeting Johnsonberg, they were quietly removed from the credits. And he was also saying they never supported my vision for any of this, so I don't want their name on. So I want them to be removed from the role of supporting my work and my dream (laughs) in the credits. They were there originally because I thought they were doing that, but now they're traitors. They were not. If you could add them to the credits as traitors, (laughs) it would be good. Snyder apparently was also given $60 million. I remember that. Which was more than the $20 to $30 million initially reported to finish Justice League. But what the studio didn't know at the time was that he'd already shot footage in his backyard in in the height of the pandemic. Uh, (laughs) Sources say that it was a rogue shoot which flouted COVID protocols and union guidelines. This is something he has uh, he denied. All right. Yeah. And then they said, well, you have to give us the $30 million back. And he said, sure, I will give it back, but I'll give it to you in wheelbarrows full of pennies. No, actually what he said. And they're like, oh, no. <laughs> Go <laughs> what on. He, what he actually said was, can you give me an additional $13 million <laughs> Great. to make this? And they were like, fine. So in total, the thing cost including marketing, over $100 million. Wow. Also, apparently his inclusion of Martian Manhunter uh, blinded the studio. Walter Hamada demanded he be removed Other plan because uh, they had other plans and didn't want to waste him. I don't believe that. You're not doing anything with Martian, Martian Man- Manhunter. No, don't, don't kid yourselves. Yeah. Uh, Snyder threatened to delete the footage if he didn't get his way, which he did. And again, they gave him $30, $13 million. Uh, Adam Wingard, who directed the uh, Godzilla vs. Kong movie, it was like, hey, can you stop having your fans come over and, like, review bomb my movie? Oh, because were they out at the same time? Or? Yeah, or around then. And right. Snyder was like, oh, I, don't, I don't control my fans. You're giving me too much credit or whatever. So he, he basically didn't. So that's, They're out of my control now. I can't do anything. That's pretty much it. And then Ray Fisher, who was mentioned in this article, because there's a bit on uh, him and Joss Whedon, which we've talked about mm. before, was like, yeah, a lot of this article is actually – Bullshit. So there you go. Whoa. That's all news of this thing that will not go away and it keeps coming up and th- th- you're welcome, everybody. <laughs> One day it will go away. Don't worry. When? Years from now. Years did, and years. And he also put, uh, I don't know if you saw this, he put a post on Vero, which is a quote from Mussolini with the Justice oh, no. League, which said, <laughs> Vero, the famous social media service that only Joss- <laughs> that only uh, Zack Snyder uses. That's right. If I advance, follow me. If I retreat, kill me. If I die, avenge me. Wow. And who? Who's what in that? Yeah, who was the who was on the picture? No, that? it was like the logo or whatever. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Yeah, so there you go. Wow. That's fun, isn't it? No. <laughs> do you want more news? Yes, of course I do. Uh, so Mortal Kombat two, but again, it's Mortal Kombat forward. two, the big deuce. So <laughs> Simon McQuaid is returning. He directed the last Mortal Kombat. He's got a new writer in Jeremy Slater who worked on. Uh, what did he work on? I think he worked on. Moon, Moon Knight. Oh, yes. And also Umbrella Academy. Oh, I see. So there you go. Are you excited for a Mortal Kombat movie, but maybe one where they do a Mortal Kombat? When they do the actual time. Mortal Kombat. Somebody will say, can we do a Mortal Kombat, please? Mm. I've even roped off this arena where we can do a Mortal Kombat in. That would be great, I think. There's also some sawdust to mop up any blood and or brains. <laughs> Absolutely. Which will be occurring. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. And or spinal columns. Yes, that's which right. Which I guess maybe counts as brains. And other bits. And other bits All and your bobs. bits, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, it did well. Like yeah. for a movie released in the pandemic and also to streaming, it actually had a pretty decent box office all in all. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, let's let's have a Mortal Kombat again, shall we? Let's do you it. Know, it a- are we going to have the guy again, Cole? Remember Cole, the point of view character, Mr. Metal Look, Armor Man? Just kill him. Oh, <laughs> you think so? Kill him and his family? Yeah, either work him into like – you know, work him in, so it's like an actual ensemble mm. or kill him. Yes. Because he's not interesting enough Correct. to have as a main Mortal Kombat man. I mean, he might disagree. He, I, might, I he like, might have a rich in a I life. like Lewis Tan. He's great. But, like, you can't, you know, just bring in guy, bring in a new guy. There's so many Mortal Kombat characters and just be like, Armadillo Man. Sure, yeah. I don't, you know. Maybe if they changed his name to Armadillo Man, you'd be more on board. I, he'd have to hunch over like an Armadillo, though. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm not interested. And then would he have to do his famous... Roll down a hill move? <laughs> yes, he would. That's great. His Sonic the Hedgehog-inspired roll down a hill move. That's terrific. Yeah. Does Sonic the Hedgehog have a friend called Armadillo? Probably, right? You know he's got a bunch of friends now? Yeah. You always see like a show and there's like a pink one and a green one and I'm like, I don't know what All kinds of animals and guys, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, it's Trailers Ahoy. Uh, did you see the trailer, Mason, for Halloween ends? Yes, I did. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, I mean, it's Halloween again, isn't it? It's, they, yeah, it's the it's the one that Halloween Kills should have been. Yeah, I guess the end of this the so- end of this uh, <laughs> series series. Yes, um, Laurie Strode gives 
Michael Myers a real like reverse headbutt, yeah, a fan? move that would never work on him, <laughs> I suspect. But maybe he's been previously weakened in the movie at the, by this point or something. God, I don't you know. just you'd shoot him so much, wouldn't you? You'd have so many guns on you. Yeah, yeah. like from a distance. Yep, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. when you get close, you'd shoot him some more, but yeah, not man. too close where he can grab you, which yeah, he would. That's true. Maybe a drone with a flamethrower on it or something. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, there's so many options. And there are a lot of options. Yeah, yeah but it, that's uh, that's going to be October of. This year, I oh, believe. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah, but I also suspect that this might not be the end of this <sighs> particular saga. There's going to be a spin-off. This I'd had imagine. so much promise. I remember liking the first, I liked the first it too, one of the yeah. reboots. Yeah, yeah, but then they really killed all the goodwill with that absolute filler of a, of a middle one, which yeah. was just like, this ends tonight, and but it's going to end in the same place it started, actually. <laughs> Uh, we also got a very brief teaser for National Treasure Edge of History. I didn't say that. Sorry. It was it's fine. It's made for like 28 seconds. And the guy who's not Nicolas Cage is back and he's like, I'm back. I'm Nicolas Cage's friend. Nice. Do you remember? Yeah, kind of. Just yeah. sort of generically handsome. That guy. Yeah, yeah, he's in The Hangover. He's the guy who goes missing in The Hangover. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Famously guy who's not really in The Hangover. It's true, yeah. You're familiar with that character? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of like, where's Nicolas Cage? Good question. <laughs> Just give him some money so he can show up and go, you know, the National Treasure was all you guys doing this National Treasure without me. Oh, do you think he's not in the show at all? He's not in the trailer, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, like Emilio Estevez isn't in the new season of Mighty Ducks that they're making. It was in the first one. Tom Hanks isn't in Turner and Hooch. That's so true. So I think there's a good chance that he's not in. But he'll do anything. Just That's get him. That's what I'm him. saying, yeah. <laughs> Just get him to do it. Yeah. So, you know, Incredible. there you go. I'm yeah. not really a fan of those movies, but they're all right, I guess. I've definitely seen at least one. Yeah, same. Yeah. Mm. And the only – there's there is a scene, like there's a – the only thing that I can remember from any of those movies, there is a so whichever one I watched, there is a scene where they they've, they've all they've been adventuring and they need new clothes, so they go to like an urban outfit or oh, something yeah. like that. It's just an extended scene where they're like, "Oh, this stuff's great and the prices are incredible." <laughs> they're right though. Yep. When a movie hits, you know what I mean. That's it really true. Hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also a uh, a teaser trailer for John Wick Chapter Four. Yeah. And my single single note from this is, just calm down, mate. You think he should come? Yes. <laughs> wow, okay. He's just gone off chops. Mm-hmm. It's been too long. Do you think he is not justified in going off chops, though? No, he seems to be causing more problems than he's solving. Like he kills a guy, but that guy has a knows a guy who yeah, has, a, sure. has a secret organisation. Makes you think, though, doesn't it? D- yes. Mm. Cycle of violence, et cetera, and so okay. forth. So that's your one note and not <laughs> Donnie and Keanu Reeves' sword gun fight. <laughs> yeah, Great. What was your one note? That was it. The, 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 the gun, the sword gunfire. Oh, he's got nunchucks now. Yeah, well, he's hitting that whap of that guy in the head with the nunchucks. Yeah. That guy was very nunchucks, I'd imagine, after he knocked mm. him dead. With the, yes. With the, remember when those were banned? Yes. Like they're actually an effective weapon, mm. like in the hands of a normal person. Exactly. Like a knife. Anybody can use a knife. Yeah, but nunchucks, you will <laughs> smack yourself in the skull so fast. <laughs> yeah. So that look, uh, John Wick Chapter 4 looks good, though. You know, do you think it's going to be the end of John Wick? I mean, no. bearing in mind that there is also a season, like a show, sorry, they're making a streaming thing, aren't they? Oh, yeah, they are. Uh, ballerina. Yeah. With Anna de Armas. Is And is Atomic Blonde in the same I don't think world so. or something? I don't think so. But okay. maybe. Might be one of the same directors, maybe. Yeah, maybe, is, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's going to be out in March of 2023. My goodness. And it's got Bill Skarsgård. And you love Bill Skarsgård. I do love Bill Skarsgård. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I, I'm, I'm interested to know what you thought of this. Okay, here Because as a big fan of the D&D movie, mm-hmm. you. Oh, the original D&D yeah. movie. There's been two D&D movies, I think. <laughs> yes, you're I've right. seen the first one, but I've not seen the second one, I Me don't too, think. Me too, yeah. Uh, the first one has Jeremy Irons. I've seen that one. Yeah, it's horrendous. Yeah, yeah. But also kind of incredible. Is it? <laughs> I mean, not in any way that's like. Good. Does that movie also have one of the the guy from National Treasure in it? Which one? He's got. It's got one of those. Definitely has a generically handsome man in it that could be that guy. as the lead. Because yeah. the lead is a Jimmy Olsen guy. Yes, He's one of the Jimmy Olsen. He is, okay, that's who I'm thinking of. Yes, but yes, there's a new one, new Dungeons and Dragons movie. Yep. Honor Among Thieves. And let me tell you this, James. I thought it looked a lot of fun. Yeah, me too. It's very much. I think they've. You know, it it is it has been marvelified. The yes. Dungeons and Dragons universe, in the sense that can you believe this big dragon? Exactly, and also you know, it's, did, this, it's, did that just happen? It's a little bit gu- a Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, it's a band of misfits, and there's some classic rock happening behind them, yeah. etc. And it looks a lot of uh, you know a, a, a bit of that. Um, Honor uh, among thieves, by the way. That's what, is I said. what it's called. Did you say that already? I did say oh, that. Sorry, already. I apologize. No, you can, you should cut that out so you're not embarrassed by the thing you've just. No, said. I want to leave it in. I want to okay. own my mistakes. <laughs> okay, great. Colleagues, cut out the bit where he said it. Oh no. <laughs> 
I'll look like a fool. Uh, I think it looks fun. Yeah. I mean, I haven't played Dungeons and Dragons in decades at this point, but I had fun when I did. And yes. I think fun is the the you know the the essential element to it. I don't I don't think they should take it too seriously. But also, do you want them to cut to like some Stranger Things looking kids who are playing the game? They're like, oh, we're playing this oh, game. Oh, what if they we're did? The the, I would maybe, hate that. I maybe at the end I would. I, I would hate. I, that. I wouldn't hate it if they did a post credit sequence and they're like, Ugh, and it's you know, is, is it the Stranger Things kids? No. I say it is. I say some of them. They can't okay. get them all. All right. But, I mean, at the same time, they seem they seem to have got a lot of stuff in this trailer. Like, the, the, thing, the thing that I didn't like about the original Dungeons & Dragons movie... Is that it's terrible? It's terrible, but it was also incredibly generic. Yeah. Like, it didn't... It was just like, oh, yeah, there's a dragon and a, a wizard or whatever and some... But this one has, like... In this one, there's a black dragon that breathes acid, not fire. Yeah, that was cool. Because that's what black dragons do. Black uh, We saw a displacer beast. We saw a mimic, which is one of those. Uh, yeah. Looks like a treasure chest, but it's a horrible monster. Yep. We saw uh did I say displacer beast? Yeah, did you say owl bear? I did see an owl bear. Now, there's the controversy, James. Yes, I've heard there's many a controversy oh, yes. about this particular owl bear. Well, because the, the that character is a druid. I'm not sure of the actor's name. Yep. But uh, did druid. You say, did you say druid? No, I, I would never say Druig. I wouldn't dare say Druig. But the, a, a, in the Dungeons and Dragons universe, at least when I played it, a Druid could change shape in once they reach a certain level. Druid. But they can change shape into beasts yes. of the forest, but not monstrosities. And an owlbear oh. is a monstrosity, but also who cares and it's fun. Yeah, who cares yeah. and it's fun. And it's fun, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and also great cast. Yeah, I agree. Again, that lady, I don't know her name. But uh, we got Justice Smith from Detective Pikachu. We got yep. Chris Chris Pine, Michelle Rodriguez. Who else is on the team? Ah, uh, the dude from um, he's in like Bridgerton. He's like I'm. Bridgerton. Oh, Re- Reggie yeah. Jean. He's like I'm famous now. Yes. I'm gonna be James Bond maybe or whatever. Re- I thought I thought it was Rene Jean, but it's Reggie Jean, Jean Page. Page. Yes, there we go. He's yeah. a paladin. He's a paladin. So that's the team, and that's a, that's a. I don't even think the Sophie or- Lillis is her name. There we go. They didn't even have. Oh, like and Hugh he, Grant. Hugh Grant is in it also. As Forge yes. Fitzwilliam. Yeah, he's a rogue. Ooh. He's a bit of a rogue. That fellow. He is isn't a bit he? of a bloody rogue, isn't he? Uh, look, it looked fun, and I, there was a big fat red dragon who I think is like famous in the like he's an actual character in the, in the Dungeons and Dragons. I don't want. I don't know what universe this is set in. I think it might be a new thing. Yeah, I think because of fun. the owl bear situation. Because of the owl bear situation, different different rules. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. This is also directed by John. Also, I like the little the little lute playing hop. That yeah, yeah, that's fine. That was really He's good. a musical man. Mm. He sings in. I haven't seen Into the Woods, but he sings in that. But he also sings in uh, Into the Spider Verse. Oh yeah, He's, yeah. He does that Spider Man song, which apparently a hundred percent committed to. And also, people are like oh, Led Zeppelin, not very appropriate. They have that st- Ramble On's all about Gollum. Yeah, that song Ramble On. It's all he's like. Oh, I met a beautiful woman and Gollum kidnapped her or whatever. Gollum kidnapped her. Yeah, no I had way. To, I had to go to Mordor to get her back. Why did he Gollum Gollum take her to Mordor? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Canonically, it doesn't make any sense. He's not a kidnapper. He's a coveter of. Rings and he'll and eat you or whatever, he'll but he won't you. kidnap you. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is also you might be interested in this. It's directed by Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly, who from from many things, but they. Directed game night. That's right. Yeah. So this that's that's good vibes all around. Well, there is also an element in that trailer where it looks like they are gonna do a game of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Like there's a bit where it's the bit with Hugh Grant where like this big square grid system pops up mm. from the ground, and I think that's probably like the that is the equivalent of like a Doom movie where we get yeah. the first person. Or when we see the overhead um, from um, Warcraft. Yes, when exactly. Like, when yeah. you see the battle. From well, look, overhead. this might be a disaster, but I like you like game night. Game night was fun. I'd like to game night. Yeah. Game night a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, uh, speaking of games, Mason, there's Go a new on. game. I don't know if you saw the Game of Thrones trailer. There was a new Game of Thrones trailer. I did read actually, and it's like, oh, look at these dragons. Oh, this this is happening, isn't it? <laughs> sure is. I think yeah. Somebody said that at some point. I'll but go, I'm going to be the king. Well, maybe somebody else will be the king. But I'm going to be the king. All right, you could be the king. <laughs> I'm going to stab you though. Yeah. <laughs> then I'll be the king. I'm going to hit you with nunchucks. Yeah. Oh, I hit myself. Oh, no. Oh. I'll never be the king. Um, so uh, the only thing I wanted to bring up is there was a panel and mm-hmm. somebody, there was a Q&A and someone oh, said. Oh, I know about this. Someone said to Matt Smith, it's Morbin time. And he said, it's what? Nice. That's great. <laughs> like he doesn't know, yeah. Mason. Are you saying he doesn't know? He I reckon he might not know. How could you not? I don't. Is he even on social media? I reckon yeah, he might not Yeah, but surely be. somebody in his life would be like, people are making fun of that thing you're in. No. Hmm? No, I don't reckon. Okay, I reckon I reckon Morbius is such a singular disaster <laughs> that I think a lot of people like just 
I'll let you have a drink with Matt. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't mention Morbius at all. Don't say anything. Yeah, yeah. Don't say anything. Yeah, cool. Ask about House of the Dragon. <laughs> Just move, move quickly. Move quickly. Are you interested in House of the Dragon? Nope. Me neither. Mm-hmm. But, Terrific. you know, that's not to say that, you know. Yeah. That, uh, yep. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've <laughs> seen there, I, I saw a billboard recently for it and it was House of the Dragon and then in tiny text over the top it said Game of Thrones. <laughs> so there's still. This is Game of Thrones. Yes. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Great. Well, I guess Mason, it's time to do a big Comic Con this year. Oh, I have some sad news. If you go, if you is if this uh, your one bit of sad news? Well, I've got two bits of sad news actually. Oh, if you're interested, Mason. In two bits of sad news. Here's one. Here's one from the Hollywood Reporter about Marvel's movie math. Did you read about this this week? No. What's this? So this is uh, writers and artists who create characters that power the Marvel Cinematic Universe say the company offers a labyrinthian compensation system that underpays them. Oh, I so did this say. this this week yeah. we learned that. Devin Grayson and J.G. Jones, who created Yelena Belova, yes. uh, thought they would take home $25,000 each because she appeared in Black Widow. Which is also Not nothing. Not nothing, yeah. <laughs> Considering like a few months ago we talked about how Scarlett Johansson was like, I'm, I need more tens of millions of dollars for this because you only put it on Disney Plus or whatever. Yeah. So – Thanks to paperwork they signed outlining how much they would receive for films, TV shows, video games, and action figures featuring Yelena. But when Grayson and Jones, who created Yelena in 1999, eventually received payment in November, that $25,000 dwindled to about $5,000 without explanation. So Grayson has been trying to track down how how this works. And apparently how it works, to some degree, is that you get $25,000 for a theatrical film appearance, $2,000 for an episode of TV over 30 minutes, $1,000 for an episode of TV 30 minutes or less, so on and so forth. There's thousands of dollars for, for action figures or whatever. But it seems to be that what happens is that Marvel splits the sum between the writer and the artist. So according to Marvel's math, the most Grayson could have made from Black Widow is $12,500, half of the pot. But if the film features more than one character covered by a special character agreement, the company will share the pot of money among all creators with skin in the game. So if share, not so, like additional no, money. No, no, so the $25,000 would be shared across everybody, including people who created Red Guardian, Melina Vostokov, et cetera. So they could just – you could, what, what, Marvel That's could, crazy. what Marvel could potentially do is just have one scene where there's a bunch of guest characters, like there's 25 guest characters, yeah. and then go, actually, you only get $100 mm. because all the, everybody gets $100. Or they could just say, we're just giving you less money or no money yeah. because we can. Because we can, and what are you going to do, fight us on this? Yeah. Anyway, I think that's poor form, and I think that – look, Incredible poor form. Look, maybe I would be turned insane with greed if I became a rich Hollywood actor. But I think if I was in a Marvel movie and they're like, you want $10 million for this, mm. for this ca- to play this character, I would like to think that it would go, can you give, I'll take $9 million yeah. and you give a million dollars to the people who actually created the characters, otherwise I wouldn't be. Well, here. I would take $8 million and give two to them. If I like to think if I was a famous wow, Hollywood actor. Wow, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's just the kind of guy that I am. All right, I'm let's do a standoff. <laughs> no, that's it. I purely, go, high, purely high. I will not go lower right? than $8 million. Okay, right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's what? incredibly poor form and sad news, yeah. Mason. What's your second bit of sad news? My second news? bit of sad news, this this week um, we saw the passing of Alan Grant, not Dr. Alan Grant no. from uh, the Jurassic Park movies. Thank God. But the writer Alan Grant, British writer Alan Grant, who wrote on Judge Dredd in like the, for, for a long time, from the 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah. Uh, very, very talented, very like just a real like turn, turn Dredd into like a real, you know, just a just a – so just a real big time metaphor for just all the awful stuff happening in policing. And, I don't think and, it's and a politics. metaphor, Mason. You think he's just, just a guy a with a helmet? He's having an adventure. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, not everything has to be politics. That's very true. Yeah. Also, he um he wrote on in the nineties. He wrote on a, a new Batman book called Shadow of the Bat, mm-hmm. and so he created Mister Zaz. Yeah, uh, he created the Ventriloquist. Yep, uh, he, and he created Anarchy, who's one of my faves. Uh, Which one's Anarchy again? Anarchy is um he's uh he's a he's like a Batman of the people. He's a criminal, but he's like he's he's bringing down the systems that okay. uh, that, that that oppress people. That's awesome. So he created Zaz. He yep. created Anarchy. Mm-hmm. He created Jeff Dunham. That's awesome. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing stuff, Mason. Anyway, yeah. rest in peace, Alan. How uh, old? Uh, 70, 73. Boo. Yeah, I know. If you had to say hundred to three, I would have said great. Great. No, that sucks. Mm-hmm. Amazing work though. That's really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, because you know. Those are good characters. They are. Except for the third one I hadn't heard of. Okay. So you mentioned You that. would know Anakin. Anakin's I do, in the Arkham games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do, I do. All right, Mason. Let's do some more Comic-Con stuff. And we're going to be ranking things by woos as we normally do. Do you want to explain our woo system? Uh, big woos for big news. Yep. 
Small woos for small news. Sometimes no woos. No woos for bad news. That's right. Mm-hmm. Or just indifference. That's a t-shirt, right? Big news. Big woos for big news. How's there all the woos? It has all the all that. It's just spell? text. It's just a wall of text. Yeah, no. But t-shirt. what's the um? Is that everything spelt normally? Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. So, yeah. Okay. Great. I'm, I love that actually. <laughs> right, yes. It's because it's just like you look at it and you go, you know what it is. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they screened uh, the latest Predator prequel. Oh, pray. Pray. People really loved it. There was a lot of people saying it was easily the best one since the first. Some even hinted at that this might even be better than the first movie. Whoa. Now, of course, with early screenings, who knows? That's correct. You know, mm-hmm. it's, you know everybody's excited to be there. Yeah. They get their little lanyards. They sit together and high-five each other or whatever they do, and the mm-hmm. director comes out and goes, you fucking love this, yeah. you know? <laughs> we do love this because you're here. <laughs> We're too polite. None of us would be like, we didn't like it. <laughs> but also the number of people that I – whose opinions I respect and like, including Sal from Comic Pop, said it was amazing. So th- I take this as a very good sign Woo! that this is something that comes out August 5th. We, there is a screening for us that we could go to at a cinema, isn't there, a couple of days before. Yes, but, but neither of us can make it. We're not going to go. That's correct. Uh, which is a shame, but I also I don't want to get COVID on my holiday. Yeah, I want to have go. a COVID-free time. Nice. Anyway, that's great. I'm really excited for that. Also, Berserker. You know, it's doing a love action movie, maybe, or something. Now, this is this is the anime Berserker. This is the Keanu the manga. Reeves. Oh, is that okay? Oh, I'm thinking of Berserk is the anime. Yes, I you're think. thinking of someone. But Berserker is the thinking the, Bjork. The uh, yes, the the Keanu Keanu Reeves, but he's a Highlander guy. Mm. Yeah. I, I read some issues of that. Yeah, we good. did. We did. I think we even did a book club on it mm. on Big Sandwich. But right. um, so they're doing a live action version. But apparently, also they're who's gone. playing the Berserker guy? Who would you think? Jason Statham. That's right. Wow. I'm just sat there, I'm wearing a wig. Wow. I, I look really upsetting when I wear a wig. Have you ever seen him in a wig? Yes, upsetting. Don't do it. <laughs> Stop doing that. I don't like it. Mm, I also don't like it. Uh, so it's also going to be adapted into an anime. Whoa. Uh, Production G, you're going to be doing this. Uh, I know this, but you would also might know that they did Ghost in the Shell. Ah. And there is a, already a two-season mm. commitment, which is very unusual for Netflix. Yes. But then again, it is um, – Keanu Reeves. Well, that is true, yes. And uh, well, you watched a big Netflix thing that you're going to talk about later, aren't you? That's, and that's correct, got some yes. big names in it, isn't big, it? Big names. Yeah. You... Including that Regé Jean Page. That's... Oh, is he? Yeah, he's in it. I didn't know um, that. Also, apparently, uh, Keanu Reeves hadn't seen any anime up until the point of The Matrix, and then the Wachowski showed him a Ghost in the Shell and Akira, and he's like, ooh. Really? Don't mind that. But now he's been a fan of ever since every that's day. That's correct, yes, yes, yes. Great. I love the way he rides motorbikes mm-hmm. and loves anime. Which is two things that I exclusively do in my spare time. You excel at them. I do. Riding, riding motorbikes and watching anime. <laughs> also, People are like, damn, that dude's the best at watching anime. <laughs> People watch you. You've set up a Twitch stream, but it's just you watching anime. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Also, uh, Star Trek News Mason. This is, some, this is some wild Star Trek news, quite frankly. Well, is the most wild part for you that you're excited for Picard Season 3, the footage and posters that we saw? No, no woos. So, Mason? No woos for bad news. Uh, but so, oh, also woo for Berserker. Woo! woo. Good, good stuff. What about Prey? And big woo for Prey? Yeah, big woo for Prey. Good, good, good. So, the original TNG cast is back. Pretty we much did everybody, episode yeah. episode with Ben Russell Dr. Recently. Beverly Crusher. That's right. Geordie LaForge. Old Wolf. Wolf. Grey Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. Riker, but he was back already. Riker, but double back. Yeah. They were double backed on Riker. Um, um, Deanna Troy. Yes. Mm, Which one back. can read minds or whatever? Well, Deanna Troy can't really read minds. She can read emotions, but her mother can read minds. Oh, she's an empath. Oh, I can read emotions. We all read emotions. It's called being a fucking person. You can't read any emotions. It's not about whether I can or cannot <laughs> read emotions, Mason. All right. I can read your emotion. Go on. Fun. He's done it. <laughs> Fun and you like me? Yes, that's right. Both of those are true and accurate emotions, and they're real emotions, fun, the greatest emotion of them all. Now, as someone who hasn't watched a single second of Picard, potentially, you. I've watched some of it. As someone who's watched some of Picard. Go on. uh, Are you going to catch up on Picard to watch this new season of Picard? No, don't have time. Or are you going to watch Picard season three to see what they do with this? No, I don't have the time. Aren't you even going to go to the bit where, like, they get on board the old ship at some point where they're like, this is our old ship? Which one? The, the the one that hasn't been crashed. Oh, I think they've all been crashed. I don't know what happened to the last Enterprise. Oh, God, they do a time travel then. Yeah, they know. might do a time travel. <laughs> oh, and they could meet the – if they went did a time travel and they met the young selves from like season one of TNG, maybe I'd watch that. But here's the thing. They've absolutely hamstrung themselves, Star Trek, the, the concept, because all the subsequent news about this is more interesting. Agreed. So what, I don't have – there is – 
Look, this based, is what this, all, this based, show should have been this from the start, yeah. though, right? Based on this, all this Comic Con news and all this Marvel stuff and whatever, I do not have time to watch Picard. Obviously, but even just based on the volume of Star Trek stuff that is coming out, I do not have time to watch the car. <laughs> That's right, because Lower Decks is back, and this time they're going to visit Deep Space Nine, yeah. which is fun. And in addition to that, this is a fun crossover. Star Trek Lower Decks, which is the animated series, is going to cross over with the Strange New Worlds series. So like the two Star Trek things that people definitively like, mm-hmm. they finally hit on something that everybody seems to agree that they yeah. enjoy. Uh, so it's also going to feature live action and animation. But when I first saw that, I thought, oh, so the people from Strange New Worlds are going to be animated. Mm. But it's the opposite. Yes. So Tony Jack Newsom Quaid and, John, Tony and Jack Wade are going to play their characters in live action yeah. in Strange New Worlds. But also they're set in different timelines, aren't they? Yes, they are. Great. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, so uh, Lower Decks is set like in the most – is the the furthest into the future and or around the TNG, isn't it? Yeah, something like, like that. Oh no, it's what's post TNG. Yeah, but like not super far in the future. That's correct. Yes, like everyone's still alive. From yeah, yeah, TNG and at this um point. and yeah, and Strange New Worlds is set like pre Kirk, so time travel adventure, I guess. Yeah, that's see, that's fun. the time travel adventure I'm I'm on board with. Do you want them to get on board the old ship and go? This is our old ship. It also wouldn't shock me. Yes, it also wouldn't shock me if the live action characters at, a, at one point just interact with the animated characters because the strange that's the kind of show that strange new world seems to be like they did a dress up episode the other day they did a i gotta keep I, i've stopped yeah. not intentionally yeah, yeah. But I need they to did a up. dress up as a medieval fantasy world episode like oh, a they couple love of weeks of that, ago so. mm-hmm. yeah won't that often be the start of a tng episode that's yeah. like we're doing a pirate thing yeah and then exactly. they're like captain we're approaching a big a big thing that we don't understand and it's like but oh. i'm doing this pirate thing <laughs> <laughs> captain you, you have to <laughs> Stop doing the pirate thing. All right. It's a squid or something. We don't know. Or a black hole or both. (laughs) Ah, great. Yeah. Mason. Go on. I know you're very excited about all of that. Oh, well, woo for the the last bit. But the other two, if you had to add them all up into one, if you had to give one woo for Star Trek overall, what are you giving them? Woo! It's still pretty good. Still pretty good, right? Because you can choose to not watch a thing. That's true. Can't force me to watch it all. But I mean, if just not yet. Just do TNG from the start. Just be like the TNG. Well, it's too late now, James. Yeah, I know, which is why they're doing it. Mm. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to something I like to call Marvel Animation. I thought of that. (laughs) That's Uh, great. So these are all the things that have been announced. Marvel Nation? No. Marvel Nation. Marvel Animation. I'm going to call it Marvel Nation. Trademark Marvel Animation. Well, you can trademark that. I'll trademark Marvel Nation. We'll Nobody see wants who, that. We'll see who sells the most T-shirts. Trademark whatever you want. Great. Thank you. I will. I'm reading that you like me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Man, I'm killing it this episode. So Spider-Man freshman year, mm. we got some uh, fleshing out of the world. Now, this is controversial, isn't it? It's very confusing, Mason. Let me read the synopsis and you tell me what you think I said. Okay, great. Spider-Man freshman year is an animated series that follows Peter Parker on his way to becoming Spider-Man in the MCU. Spider-Man, please. Spider-Man in the MCU with a journey unlike unlike we've ever seen and a style that celebrates the character's early comic book roots. Now, Tom Holland will not be reprising his role. Presumably mm. they're going to get the guy who did it in What If, presumably, whoever oh, yeah. that was. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's also... Or they could get the guy who did the voice in the game. Oh, yeah, he's good, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He's all, he also does the voice in the Avengers game, I think. That's I got yeah. That, now, yeah, the, the that. statement you read there, yeah. the, 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 um, the confession you read there from Marvel there, from Marvel Nation, yeah. it was like, it's his journey into the MCU. Is that an old statement? No, this is new. That's interesting. And it also says that... Charlie Cox is going to return as Daredevil, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. also, Norman Osborn is like his Tony Stark his style mentor. mentor. Yeah. And there's Doc Ock and a bunch of other characters, which mm. he wouldn't know. Because remember when he saw Dr. Octopus and he's Dr. Octopus? Mm. Got him, didn't I? Is that his name? Yes. Good. I felt like I said it wrong in my head. I'm like, <laughs> is that right? right? What a mm-hmm. dumb name. Is that real? Mm. It's real. You could be in a Marvel movie. I, I think, think I could, couldn't yeah. I? Um, is, that, is your name even real? My name is dumb real. name. My name's Real Mason. Uh, so interesting that Charlie Cox came back for this as well. Mm. But also we saw like Doctor Strange and a bunch of other characters. Uh, it also looks like kind of a 1970s-esque kind of it comic does, book doesn't style. It? I like he's, it. Uh, he's, he's, uh, Peter's got the sort of the round glasses and the sweater vest. I think. Yeah. yeah. Why is – what are they what – is, I mean, Also, what's interesting about uh, – but I think this seems to be a – because this cannot be his journey into the MCU. This is a parallel universe. He's also situation. in the MCU. Yes. Like he's in it. Correct, yes. Like you don't need to journey because he's doing it already. That's very true. But yeah. this, this this can't really be a precursor to that. I guess it leads up to his first appearance. 
Because it's freshman year. Yeah, I may, I maybe, but what is what is the justification then for the other stuff? Also, he doesn't have Ned and he doesn't Magic. have MJ. Yeah, he's because got obviously best he hasn't met them yet. Mm. What happens to that friend? Horribly murdered? Probably. Yeah, it turns into a goblin or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I guess they could do from all of this that, you know, there's a spell. And, it could but be But again, a spell. if he meets Doctor Strange, but again, there could be a spell. It could absolutely be a spell. That's true. I, I thought, like, my initial thought was, oh, this is a Sony thing, so mm. that's why this has happened. But it's not a Sony thing. Marvel own uh, everything else other than the movie rights. Yes. Mm-hmm. So they can make anything. That's true. But I guess also they want to do like a rogues gallery and yeah. who's going to fight if it's pre-Civil War Well, Spider-Man. that's the thing. I, I kind of feel like they, they did say, okay, well, this is pre – this is this is absolutely – this is his road up to arriving in the MCU, but then they went, okay, but then we can't use any visually flashy characters. Yeah. Or, or at the very least we can't use any that we've we've seen before. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I think they just have just tweaked it a bit and hope nobody's noticed that it, it really isn't a proper lead into the MCU, really. But I think that's totally fine. I think like, it's fine too, it yeah. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Because all this other stuff is, a lot of it seems to be just out of continuity. Uh, anyway. I like the the new suit, which is sort of, again, yeah. quite homemade looking. It's not the, it's not the one. has got a few suits. I mean, yeah. Saw. Oh, right. Okay, I only saw the one. Yeah. Uh, what we don't see, we see, a, we see an Aunt May, but I don't think we see an Uncle Ben. Uh, so I'm wondering if we will well, see Well, if that. he's got the powers, it'll be... After Uncle Ben. That's true. Yeah. And but, wait, I mean, they might extend that timeline. Yeah. Maybe he's killed by the Green Goblin Oh, that's true. Something. He has his powers and then Uncle Ben dies, doesn't he? Correct, or yes. whatever. That is correct, Or yes. whatever. Yes, or whatever. That's correct. Anyway, good stuff. That is good stuff. Uh, the second season, though, is confirmed and it's going to be called Spider-Man Sophomore Year. Terrific. Why don't they just name them like years one, two, three, four, whatever, like <laughs> we do in Australia? It's really confusing. <laughs> mm, yeah, Not yeah. from America. Mm. God. Junior high, senior Because it follows the tradition of Spider-Man movie titles with incomprehensible names. Oh, yeah. They all sound quite similar and you can't really remember which one it is even though you do it as your job. You have to say, you know, the one where he went to Europe because mm. you can't remember the name of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they go, no way home, no way, because he did come home from that. Homecoming, yeah. no, he didn't come. Okay, far from home. There yeah, because he was. But also, in many ways, he was being far from home from any, from all of them. Like mm. Civil War, he was quite far from home because he went to an airport in Germany. That's very true. Should have called it. Spider-Man, Spider-Man goes, goes to, to an airport in Germany. Germany. Yes. <laughs> and gets in a big fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we also got a look at I Am Groot. That's true, it which is. is coming August 10th. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be five short stories about little Groot, little yes. baby Groot. Uh, but it's, it's like it looks like the movies. Like yes. the, it's not like a two D animation thing. It's not that it would matter if it was, but it just looks like the movie version of yeah. Groot. And it looks incredible, and he and he farts out a little leaf and little creatures and That's true. and whatever. It looks uh looks pretty cool and chill and fun. And I'll probably show my kids that. I reckon terrific. Yeah. No, I have to show them all in order. So I'll start with Iron Man 2008. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then I'll show them Edward Norton's Incredible Hulk. That's correct, yes. And then I'll show them Iron Man 2. You can't leave yet. There's a post credit sequence. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. is at the end of The Incredible Hulk. Most people forget. <laughs> yes, it was turned into a Marvel one-shot called The Operative. Yes, we'll watch that also. <laughs> but you need to watch it in the context of The Incredible Hulk first. Don't leave. Okay, this is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1. Now, it takes a turn halfway through when Hydra is uh, is revealed. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to think this series is quite interesting because he's got a flying car at the end of the first episode, but then it's going to turn out it's not interesting. But then maybe it gets more interesting. I don't know. I stopped watching it. But we won't. We're going to finish this. <laughs> Also, big news on X Men ninety seven. Yeah, we got some new character models. And, That's right. Uh, some some of the existing models got got a little design tweak. Well, it's been four years or whatever since yeah. in the timeline. That's true. And but but also some new characters. We've got Sunspot. Yep. Uh, others. Yeah, others. Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler was in the original. Yeah, I believe so. Okay, so this right. is fall twenty twenty three or spring if you're in the different hemisphere like mm-hmm. we are. Uh, but Come Ma- on, America. Magneto is going to be leading the X Men, and he's got his leading the X Men new outfit on, which and is he's the leading sleeveless... the X Men long hair, yeah, long mm-hmm. flowing hair. Mm-hmm. How do you think this is going to tie into the Marvel movies? Because they seem to be keep hinting that this is somehow linked in some capacity, and they keep using the theme song as oh, well. Oh, yeah, that's true. They do, don't they? Yeah. And the new movies, the new Marvel X- mutants movie is just going to be called the Mutants. Is that confirmed? That is the rumor. We didn't get any confirmation of it today. But yes. Wow. I mean, I would love to see if they just went full on cartoon outfits in the MCU. That but then would wouldn't great. that also have to mean, though you could do time travel, that the X-Men have existed since the 90s and now they're all old? So yep. Scott Summers is like, I'm 60. Yes. I'm 60 and I'm upset. Yes. <laughs> that, could be his, that could be his battle cry. I'm 60 and I'm upset. 
<laughs> I'm just a regular man with they the can laser all have, eyes. They can all have, you know, slowed aging or whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they can all have slow aging or whatever. All of them? Yep. Can some of them not? Can Scott Summers not have slow aging so he's 60? Yeah. Great. And terrific. It's wild they're bringing that back though, right? Okay, but how do you think it's going to tie in? Do you think that they're going to tie in this animated series too? I don't know. I don't know. To be oh. honest, I don't. I have no idea. Because I think they kind of want to, but because this is the, the thing that people remember. Yes, for sure. As, when I say people, I mean people our age remember. That's correct, yes. You know. Uh, don't know. Don't know, Mason. Don't know. But you know what I do know? What do you know? What If is happening season two. Early next year it's going to come out. Apparently that we're going to see some Captain Carter versus the Hydra Stomper who's going to be her wor- version of the Winter Soldier. <laughs> oh, he's going to be the Hydra. What? What does that mean? I don't know, Mason. Is this a continuation Hydra Stomp- of that? Hydra Stomper Steve Rogers, right? Yeah. Isn't that, isn't the, is this, is this what if going to be a continuation of the previous yes. Captain Carter what So if? the Captain Carter from this is not the Captain Carter from Doctor Strange 2 also. Yes, de- right. Definitively. So she's having her own adventures and is not a Nazi or whatever like she is in the Illuminati world. Oh, yeah, right, she's right. She's right. a member of the... The whatever they're called. Avengers Secret Police situation. Yeah, exactly, yeah. We're also going to get an Odin versus Mandarin story. Okay. He's just trying to open a fruit, but he's got his big metal gloves on. He can't do it, Mason. Very good. He can't do it. Wow. And if he zapped it, it would explode. That's true. There's a subtlety to it that he can't quite master. Mm. Also, they're not These that. mortal fruits, <laughs> they confound me. Frigga, open the fruit for me, dear. Oh, you're dead? You already were murdered? <laughs> ah. Yeah. Because she was murdered by an elf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's also going to be a Halla episode. Okay. Hell of a good time. Ha <laughs> ha, nice. Potentially. Yeah. Also. That's, that'd be fine. Woo. Yeah. Just woo. Just woo. Just woo. Oh, uh, let's go. Let's do, hang on. Let's let's backdate some of these woos. Mm. Um, freshman year. Woo. Yep. Woo. I agree. I am Groot. Woo. woo. X-Men 97. Woo. Pretty good. What if? Woo. <laughs> and now we've got Marvel Zombies. Yeah. This is going to be the same universe as the previous episode, so a continuation of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. It's also going to be MA for television. Whoa, that's rude stuff. We're going to get some gore. We're going to get some guts. We're going to get some kills. Mm-hmm. Uh, the zombies or the villains are going to be Hawkeye, Captain America, Abomination, Ghost, Captain Marvel, Wanda, Okoye, and Icarus. Mm. Oh, there's a sort of a production still of Icarus, and he's... All these Eternals guts are hanging out. Yeah. They're all sort of circuit-like. Wow. That's fun. So he didn't fly into the sun in this version. Great question. Maybe not. Maybe not. And the heroes are going to be Yelena, uh, Katie. Oh, that's bad for the people who own the rights. Who, very who, bad. Who were promised something for Yelena. They would have been, <laughs> got a couple of grand maybe. Uh, Katie. I bet, I, bet, I bet the episode goes for 29 minutes so they don't have to pay him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They all, yeah, they're all about that. Uh, is it Caddy or Katie from Shang- Shang-Chi? Katie. Yeah, cool. There you go. Kate Bishop. Oh, also, none of these creators are going to get anything. Nah, it's the, it's they're the, all together. They're all, they're all together. Uh, Kate Bishop, Red Guardian, Jimmy Wu, Death Dealer, Shang-Chi, and Ms. Marvel. That's good. So that's a good well, point. Well, we're going to get um, Iman Vellani, presumably, is the voice of I hope uh, so. Ms. Marvel. and uh, Just a good fun. Randall Parker's Jimmy Wu. That's exciting. That's right. Jimmy, big woos all around. What do you think of this one, though? Big woos? I mean, pretty woo, but... <laughs> Didn't I mean, see any Ant Man in there. He's still a head, isn't he? Yeah, he must be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I love this Marvel Zombies universe. I would rather the zombies, yeah. the the zombies in the as in the comic book universe that can talk to one another. Do you and, think they can twist it into that though? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe there's a big cloud of gas or something. Yeah. Maybe there's a big cloud. Or a of cosmic gas. thing. Cosmic. Maybe thing. Icarus does a thing. Yeah. With his circuits, like a ray. Maybe a ray. He sure. Goes, bzz, yes. And everyone's like, "Hello." Mm-hmm, sure. Yeah. Great. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Any big woos for this one? Have to tell me what it is. The Marvel Zombies thing. Oh, woo. Yeah, yeah. pretty woo. We had a gap there because we caught break about <laughs> yes. so we don't lose yes. any of the bigger That's records. Right. So there you go. Mason. Go on. <laughs> the, co- the, the, the continuity of the DC universe is about to shift. The or continuity is. I don't know. Great. So people were expecting big things from DC's Hall H yeah. panel. Mm. And in many ways. They uh, failed to deliver? Yes. But also, mm. they, to be fair, go on. never promised anything. Anything. That's correct. But uh, we're going to go through what happened here. So uh, first of all, speaking at a, at a separate Comic-Con panel, DC Comics Chief Executive Officer Jim Lee said there are no further plans to expand on the material from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yep. So Because I think also at one point he was going to do a comic or something. Do you remember yeah. we talked about that? So there you go. So if you're a big fan out there, if you're a bot or real, mm-hmm. sure. You know, you just have to have a big sook If about you're it. a bot, he's so excited to get into another round of Restore the Snyderverse, well, it's not going to happen. You can do it. Yeah, do it. Just, yeah. Yeah. 
you can you might be able to bully them. But also remember, you're not real. Yeah, you're not a real. You're just a construct. That's right. You're just some lines of code. But then again, aren't we all? Wow, mm, that's great, think. Mason. Yeah, it's really insightful. Do you have any insight though into Shazam: Fury of the Gods trailer? Other than it looks fun. It does look fun, doesn't it? It looks, looks very fun. He fights I, a big dragon, throws a bus at it or whatever. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, they've they've decided that his musical motif is Eminem. Because yes. remember last time it was My Name Is? Yeah, yeah. Because that was thematically appropriate. His name is. We don't know what his name is. What was the Eminem it, song again in this in one? In this one, can't remember. <laughs> one of them? Certainly. Stan? Yeah, it was Stan. I don't think it was. That's yeah. appropriate. Mm. Yeah. We also Dear get, Eminem, I'm coming to kidnap you. And I've got superpowers. <laughs> what are you going to do gonna about it? It's going to be really easy for me yeah. to do uh, looks yeah. fun. I'm looking forward to seeing Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren. Fun little, fun little um, I, I believe... One of the writers? Yeah, one of the writers involved in this movie also wrote a bunch of Fast and Furious movies, which makes sense why, why Shazam is like, I've seen all the Fast and Furious movies. Also, Helen Mirren is in several of the Fast and Furious movies. That's right, movies, so exactly. That's uh, also, it, it's, you see at the start that he's kind of directionless in his family, even though they've all kept their superpowers, but mm-hmm, they're mm-hmm. kind of going their separate ways for the time being. Yes. And he also said, oh, man, I don't know even what I'm doing being a superhero because there's other superheroes out there like The Flash mm. and Aquaman and Batman. Yeah. And that's all the superheroes. All the superheroes, yeah, that's There's right. There's no other superheroes. Mm. Yeah. Wonder Woman, like that thing she did in the 80s. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, my personal he thought. He met Superman. He did meet Superman, yeah. <laughs> but we don't know the status of Superman, though, do we? No. But, and also... The first thing I thought was because obviously they went, oh, I, there's another guy with a red suit with a you know and it's lightning and, and the lightning, etc. So that works for the, the the trailer. But I'm also wondering if they went, let's um, let's put the flash in this and see how people react. Yeah, to it. you know, because they could have. There's oh, there's got to be another superhero with a red suit that he could they could have just another subbed version in of in. the flash. I don't know. Yeah, but I think they put it there's in. A, there's a there's a better version of the Flash out there, which yeah. is which which is That's right. <laughs> doing more normal Dawson's stuff. Dawson's dad from the Dawson's Flash. From the but Flash. I think they maybe they put it in there and so they could gauge reaction. And yeah. Look at the social media reactions and have people go, "Ooh, Ezra Miller." Ooh. Yeah. No, thank you. Well, after well, none of that was mentioned either. Mm. No word of the Flash or the second Aquaman movie. Yeah. Also, didn't the Wizard Shazam that like, gives him? I the thought power, he died. Didn't he die? I thought maybe he dissolved into sparkles or something. Yeah, you might be. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's how they get us. That's how they get us. Mm. This looks good, though. Yeah, really. Also, we, 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 the, this this particular corner of the DC universe also leans into the that that area. The first one did, which is that superheroes are kind of a pretty established thing in that world. Yeah, you can just go to a shop and buy a, a toy with a Batman or these there's like Green Lantern plushies. Yes. in the background and stuff like that. Don't know what to do with that. Is yeah, have we seen him yet in any capacity? No, just the Justice League flashback bit, I think. Oh, yeah. Mm. And the 2011 movie. Yes. That's a good movie. It's a great. <laughs> Agree to disagree. <laughs> anyway, what are, you, uh, what are you thinking here in terms of woos? Oh, woo. Yeah. But not like crazy woo. It no, it just like, feel like also more of the same. The other thing about this DC panel is just no surprises. And the footage that we saw, mm-hmm. like with Shazam, that was a new trailer, but we've seen Black Adam. We've seen well, yeah. a trailer. We know everyone who's in it. This was – there was – look, all we really got – if we're talking about Black Adam trailer now, all we really got – there's a little scene where I think there's multiple Doctor Fates trying to hold yeah. uh, Black That's Adam fun. down. That looks fun. Uh, we see uh, more of Adam Smasher and Hawkman going yes. in for a big – Time. Big, big punch or a big swing, yeah, yeah, that's true. And that's good. But yeah. also, I don't know if you saw The Rock dropped from the ceiling or something. Oh, in live, in person. In, in his Black Adam costume, mm. uh, demonstrating that the hierarchy of the DC cinematic universe is about to change. Very true. But do you know what he did say? What did he say? He said the DC universe will never be the same. Oh, my God. Do you think they're positioning, they're trying to position him as New Superman? the center of all of this now? Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> How's that going? Great, I'm really <laughs> confident about it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's you gonna... can't kind of force something like this. I think you can have him as like a peripheral, no, you I know, think... like a Doctor Strange or like a. I didn't even think about it until you said it, but I think, I mean, The Rock still sells a ton of I tickets. I agree, but do you? But I don't. I don't know. I think no. I mean, I reckon I. It, it wouldn't shock me if they went okay. Well, you know, Robert Downey Jr. was kind of the the linchpin of the Marvel universe, and he was charismatic, and he sold tickets. Yep. And you you, you saw him as the boss, even though he wasn't. Let's do that with the Rock. You know. I just don't think that people are kind of on board with this, especially before the movie comes out. But I guess also, he's well, a- he can just 
He's a Don- big star. They could right. just dynamite it all and start again, which is probably <laughs> which was what they did last time. So they already did that already. Well, yeah, they can do it again. <laughs> yeah, and try again with Timothy Chalamet now as Black Adam. That's right. After this doesn't work. Now the trailer look. The trailer looks pretty good. You know. I'm yeah, not, but it I was it was kind of it. more of the same. There was a line in it that was. And again, I, I I I whenever I see this, I I always think to myself, am I seeing this through the lens of kind of being sick of the rock a little bit? Yeah. But there was a lot. There was a lot. There was a couple of lines in it that was super on the nose, like my powers aren't a gift; they're a curse. Yeah. Great stuff, man. Really, really yeah. good. They seem pretty cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, this power's a freaking what's sick. Sp- what's specifically about this as a curse? Is it your ability to fly yeah. or shoot lightning or be completely invulnerable and immortal? Is that is that the curse part? Is it? What is it the bit where when you appear on stage and you're on the podium, you have to have a little velvet rope around you so you don't fall into the crowd? <laughs> <laughs> that might be it. Yeah. Uh, also, deadline, see, people are upset. And yeah. I, I think... They've made themselves upset. No, I think this They've is... They've got an upset tummy. I think this is just a, like there is some like... You want well, a, super, a little... you want a Superman thing? Well, and we're going to talk about this. Deadline have suge- Deadline said, "Yeah, Henry Deadline. Cavill will put in a surprise appearance." Mm. And also, I just want to mention as well. All they said, the Deadline, they said this. There was a tweet that said, "We're hearing Henry Cavill could put in a surprise appearance to talk up more Superman." It, but within that article that I clicked on, it's, it just said, "There's also a buzz that Henry Cavill will put in a surprise appearance to talk up more Superman." But that's it. Mm. He wasn't like he was in it. No. We don't, then we're going to announce anything in particular. But Dwayne Johnson was also asked, I don't know if you've seen this, who, who would win in a fight, fight between Superman and Black Adam? And he said, pound for pound, they're pretty close. It depends on who's playing Superman. And there was a very mixed reaction. Oh. Because well, what's the news that you've got, the scoop, Mason? Uh, well, the scoop is this is from someone whose name I will not read out. Yeah. Is but, it uh, you? Yeah, it's me. I'm making this up. Great. But um, so – when this news broke, yeah. and Deadline said, oh, maybe he'll make a surprise appearance. A lot of people on Twitter said, well, he's in the UK and he's filming The Witcher, yeah. wherever he's Europe, somewhere, yeah. somewhere in some dirty money place. Scandinavia, who somewhere knows? In, somewhere, somewhere grubby Wherever they film the Taken movies. Yeah, that's exactly. Eastern Europe, probably. <laughs> and they're like, well, how he's not going to... He's not going to fly over, but then some people are like, well, maybe he would fly over because he's committed to, and he's also a millionaire and he can take a day if he wants, I guess. Yeah. But we got an email from someone whose name I will not read out because they've requested that I keep their name And you out. Lo- also looked into But I Googled person, their name yeah. just to see, because sometimes people just email us lies. <laughs> yeah. But I Googled this person's name and uh, they uh, seem legit. Yeah. So uh, we will not be reading it out, but they say, hey, mates, got a flaming hot scoop, no bag of poop. Wow. Currently working on The Witcher and Henry was due to come over for Comic-Con this weekend, but he can't now because he's got COVID. Don't read into anything saying he's not travelling for anything other than that. Mm, so there you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. It seems as if they were gearing up for him to make an appearance. And apparently they've filmed like a body double for it. Oh, I see. But I think The Rock would also be pushing for him to be in it because he knows. Yes. He, he understands like what people like mm-hmm, and what yeah. people want. And he also knows it would upset people if it's – I don't think he said like it depends on who's playing Superman so we can swap him out. Yeah, He's yeah. He's like, yeah, it's my, one of my wrestling mates. Yeah, sure. That's I, right. I think he's – It's Stone Cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because then they could have done the thing, could have sat, you know, been at a panel and they could have done like they were going to do an arm wrestle or whatever. Arm wrestle. Yeah, yeah. They could do a classic, you know, Rocky versus uh, bloody and uh, one of Rocky's opponents, you yeah. know, pretend to punch each other kind of thing. People would have loved that. Yeah. Do you think it would have been okay if he FaceTimed in or do you think that wouldn't have? I was just, before you said that, I was just picturing you get a segue. And you get, mm. a, you get a Superman standee and you get an iPad <laughs> to, attached to the, where the head That's would be. That's fine. Yeah. But, and you get two assistants who are flapping the cape out the back. Yeah, yeah. And it just it just it drives around Comic-Con <laughs> and, uh, and people can ask questions. And Henry Cavill's FaceTiming. That would be wonderful. I would very much enjoy it. Mm. But sometimes he steps away and you can just see him building a computer <laughs> in the background or, or painting Warhammer miniatures or whatever. <laughs> what if he does? Mm. Yeah. Because I think this whole thing – just fell flat. Like they didn't – there was nothing about new Batman. There's nothing about mm. the, the Joker sequel. Yeah. As mentioned, the Flash and Aquaman got nothing. That's I, true. It's just, uh, you know, I yeah. just what? – okay. Unless things are happening right now, but I don't think they are. I think they were banking – I mean, if this is true, this would have – if they brought back Henry Cavill, mm. completely different tone for all of yeah, this. Definitely. It would have been like pretty solid panel, but boy, mm. did they bring it home yeah, yeah. at the end. There is some of the Batman news, I believe, that – there was some more information about the Ridley Year One comic book. You know the one. Oh, Paul, didn't Paul Dano? Paul Dano's writing it, and uh, okay. with with a with a legit comic guy. Do you think he'd let me write it with him? No, I think it's already been written. The Riddler puts on his big question mark suit. 
That's all you're contributing, is that? That's the op- this is the opening panel. Oh yeah, he puts on his big. Qu- he picks up his cane. Before that, he was nude. <laughs> and now he's not nude because he's put his Riddler suit on. You see, it's all the of unitard it. one. <laughs> it's, it's the- <laughs> He, he, he takes eight pages to struggle into his unitard. That's right. <laughs> his booty's too big. <laughs> oh, no, he's left his glasses on when he stretched his unitard over his head. Oh, no. So the glasses have got caught. They're pressed against his face. Wow. Yeah. Would you read that comic that I write with Paul Dado? I mean, maybe, yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Anyways. You giving me a download code for Comixology or something? Yes. Great, I will. It doesn't work. Oh. Mason. Yes. DC, what are we doing? Woo. Um, I wish you were a big woo. I'm going to go like, right, I'm going to yeah. go nothing, complete okay. silence. Look, it would not shock me even, I mean. Even without Cavill. Yeah. This isn't an, This isn't like a big deal. No. You know? Look, and it beat again, you know, I love the idea that we, we had some Justice Society members and et cetera in, in, you know, but that's all stuff we saw before. Exactly, yeah. Um. Yeah, like, like you said, it would not shock me at all if. He's now, the Rock is now the linchpin for the DC universe. This is what mm. they're trying. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't shock me if he's the new guy. Mm. We're taking it because they've always, you know, they've always tried to push it in the grim and gritty, you know, or the faux grim and gritty direction. Yeah, the Rock works for that. Yep, you know, there's gritty nothing. like a rock, like gritty like a rock. Wow, mm. undeniable, undeniable. No, I think in stark contrast, forgive the pun, Mason. Tony Stark contrast. I, that's, what, that's what I was doing already. Like, I did it though. I did no, it I was doing it already. Mm. You didn't let me finish. I was going to stay in Tony Stark contrast, but then you jumped in and now, now it's nothing. You've ruined it. Correct. That's why I did. Uh, Mason, yes. um, the MCU had a big Marvel panel. Big panel. And I want to open with this because I think this is going to be really exciting for you. Go on. Marvel has unveiled a collection of infinity stones comprised of actual precious gems with a combined value of more than $25 million. Revealed during comic, com- their Comic Con booth, the stones – uh, come with their very own Infinity Gauntlet and have a combined 150 carats. Is this something? Mm-hmm. Re- this is like the the time that DC revealed that hat. That oh, that va- very <laughs> valuable hat. Was it hun- in the realm of hundreds of dollars? Yeah, yeah. For a big dumb blue hat. Big dumb hat. Now, I know you're not interested in the hat. Oh, it was a fedora of some sort. It I was, remember that yeah. now. Okay, and yeah. it said like Superman on it or whatever. <laughs> That's right. And it was like a royal blue that <laughs> yeah. really get people's attention in all the worst ways. It might have been the ugliest thing ever committed to film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, am I excited about this <laughs> this uh, twenty five million dollar Infinity Gauntlet? Yeah. No, the time's passed. Why did they? What? Why though? Right. Like, what is this to show? Somebody can make a gauntlet. But like, did they just have twenty five million dollars to waste? Yep. But that's exactly it. <laughs> Who paid? For, I guess it was an eccentric millionaire or something. Or, yes. Or it's a promotional. But I mean, it's also I guess if you're in the jewelry business, you get everything at cost. Yeah, so that's true. You could just you just manufacture it like as a promotion. Well, so it thing. could be fake. Could just, just could be like, fake. No one's having a good look at it. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Anyway, mm. hope they make a bunch because I'll yeah. buy one. Anyway, woo. Anyways, prior to this, there were a bunch of trademarks that were leaked, and some of these were rightish. It seems. Okay. Uh, there was Nomad, uh, Shang Chi and the Wreckage of Time, Black okay. Knight Origins, Eternity, which I guess would be a flashback. Dane Whitman. Story. Okay, what's it called again? Black Knight, Black Knight Origins. Origins. Okay. Uh, Eternity Wars. Okay. Midnight Suns, Avengers Academy, which could be Young Avengers, maybe. Yeah, okay. Uh, Celestials, t- End of Time, and some other. I okay. think there was something Those else. Those are very interesting. Yeah. Is it, is, I don't know whether these are. When it says Midnight Suns, is it spelled S O N S U N S? Okay, so that's like the video game. Yeah. So that's where we're. So that seems to me. They also always revert, reserve a bunch of shit. Just in case, yeah. exactly, yeah. Because there's the new Midnight Suns video game. Yes. I don't know if that's out yet, but I saw some a little bit of footage from it. But that would suggest they might be going to tie together all their new magical heroes. So we might get mm. – we, we'll get Black Knight, we'll get Blade, maybe Moon Knight. There was rumours Blade was going to be called The Blade, which also – Terrible. Terrible, yeah. But they didn't do that. But, I mean, that could, they, they could be forming up in a Midnight Suns in addition to the Thunderbolts and et cetera. Yeah. The interesting one there for me is Nomad. Mm. Uh, Bucky? Well, so there's been a bunch of Nomads, I yeah. think. But one of them was – they won't use this one, but one of them in the, in the 90s, Nomad was the fake Bucky from the interim period when Captain America and – Bucky were off, didn't exist. Oh, so when, okay. when Captain America went into the ocean, yeah. in the 50s, Atlas Comics released some Captain America comics. I think they were Atlas at the time. Yeah. And then in the 60s when Atlas became Marvel, they were like, Captain America was frozen, but now he's back. And they had to explain why there's a Captain America in the 50s. So they're like, it was, a, it was a fake Captain America and a fake Bucky, and they went insane yes. because of weird 
super soldier experiments. <laughs> but the fake Bucky became nomad. Yes. He was like, a, I'm a cool nomadic guy and I fight crime or whatever. So it can't be that guy. So what else is it? I, I mean, know. yeah, it, it could also be nothing. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you, I think there was also some, yeah, I don't know. Steve Rogers' Captain America might have also been nomad at some yeah, point. Yeah, he was. He was at some well, point. Because that, that he was like, be I don't believe in America and they believe mm. in wearing a grey suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's good stuff. Uh, Mason, anyway, let's go. So, yeah, there were also Avengers Eternity Wars, like the Captain Am- Oh, maybe it's US Agent. Maybe he might be known. Oh, yeah, it could be too, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah there was there was a bunch of stuff that was actually revealed also can't, turned out to be part of that. Anyway, mm-hmm. we know now the uh, this saga between sagas four and six is called the Multiverse Saga, Mason, mm. as we suspected last week. We also know that Black Panther is going to be the end of phase four. Because remember how he thought we were halfway? Yes. We're not, thank God. <laughs> Great. I mean, not that it matters. You, yeah, just yeah. Put in a, mm-hmm. you put in a little, you know. Drive a stake through a time. Yes. Go right here. This is where we stop. So let's go through through summer. Do you want me to just read out the list of things and the things we've got more details on yes. we'll come back to? So we got She-Hulk Mason. Yeah. Uh, we also got Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania in Feb of next year. Mm-hmm. We got Secret Invasion in spring or mm-hmm. autumn if you're in our hemisphere of next year. I am. Guardians 3 in May. Echo in summer or winter of 2023. Mm. Uh, Loki around the same time, season two. The Marvels in July of 2023. Blade in November of 2023. Ironheart, the series in the fall of 2023. Uh, Agatha Coven of Chaos. Oh, not House re- of Harkness. Retitled mm. uh, in late 2023, early 2024. Mm-hmm. Then Daredevil Born Again in spring of 2024. Whoa. We've got some information on that. Then Captain America, The New World Order in May 2024. And that's the end of phase five. Mm. And then we'll talk about phase six, phase six after. So there you go. Uh, do you want me to kick things off, Mason, with the She-Hulk trailer, which yes, we saw? Yes, we did see that. We saw a fourth wall break. We did. We thought it was going to happen. But she did it. She looked at us and said, hello, mm. I see you. I'm going to get you. Do you think that might just be for the trailer? No. Okay. I think they're actually going to do it. Wow. Do you think they're going to justify it in universe? I say no. No, I say don't not. explain it. Yeah, sure. Just just do it every now uh, and then. Interesting things in that. We got obviously got Jamil and Jamil as Titania. She's yep. still in that. Um, but we also got the Wrecking Crew. Yeah. Who in the um in the comic books they have like a one of them has like an enchanted crowbar like a Asgardian magic crowbar mm. and they touch the crowbar and they all get like Thor style powers. But in this I don't know what's going on. Just some people. Just some people. Maybe it's Chitari technology. Yeah. Maybe it's something else that fell from the sky. Maybe they made it. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah. It looks really fun. I think also yeah. I think any concerns that people have about the CGI is it's fine. Yeah. You know, it feels like the it, – it seems funny and it seems like the camaraderie between the characters is what's kind of going to make it yeah. work. It looks as if Hulk is taking her on a private island to, like, train and she's like, I'm already the best at this. I can already be a Hulk and, and all those things. He's holding up a spandex. That's true. He's that's like, fun. Spandexes are great. Mm-hmm. And he's right, Mason. Don't you agree? Yes. Um, and also, of course, at the very end, and we talked about this, this might have been a Weekly Planet scoop, Mason. We get Daredevil doing a big role. That's he comes right. in and does a big role and he's in his – He's in a black and red suit, I think. Yeah, or there's some yellow on the. Well, look, I can't see color. Famously, I cannot see color. Is that true? Yeah. You're actually colorblind? No, no, I can see all the colors. I'm one of the best at seeing colors. So, one of the best? Yeah, yeah. Wow. If not the best, sorry, maybe I wasn't clear. Who are you tied with? But you are are the best. Mm. Also, the uh, the air horn that the Hulk uses is called Mighty Honk. I would have called it the Incredible Honk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But whatever. What can you do? There we go. See, this is the costume. You see, there's a little bit of yellow on it. He's doing a big spin. Yeah, he's doing he's a big spin. Yellow. Okay, all yeah. right. Okay, great. So there you go. Charlie Cox is back. Mm. Um, I wonder how much he's actually going to be in it. We'll have to remain. We'll have to watch the show to find out. That's how they get us. This isn't looks it? really good, though. Yeah, I'm really excited great. for this. I'm going to give it a big woo. I'm gonna what give are you going to give woo? it? There's also a guy who just appears in a puff of smoke in the courtroom. What's his deal? What Who's is this his guy? Deal? Yeah, I don't know if you notice also in the in the Black Adam thing. I don't yes. know if you saw the rock come down, but it kind of ended with a big like a big wall of smoke went up in front of him. Okay. And then the smoke dispersed. Okay, great. And he was still there. So it just seemed like. Oh, that's incredible. Was, <laughs> that's movie magic in the real world. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Uh, that's coming out soon. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm. Next up, we had a look at Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Yeah. Which is in Feb of next year. Now, they showed some footage from this. 
We saw Modoc is back. Yes. Get some Modoc. Mm. I've been looking around for some leaked images of Modoc as of recording, none as of yet. I want to see Corey Stoll's big face. Remember he got mashed? He got mashed into the quantum realm. So he's going to come back as a Modoc. Oh. Do you remember he was a yellow jacket? Oh, yeah. You know, he's like, coming back as Modoc. No, I'm a big Modoc now. Did we know that already? Did I yeah. know that already? I think it was rumored. Uh, Bill Murray's also in it. Right. Also, Scott uh, Lang. Lang in this. He's written a book about saving the world. And uh, apparently and him and his family get sucked into the quantum realm. You see his daughter's got an Ant-Man suit as yeah, well. Yeah, it's purple, yeah. Um, and he runs into Kang and Kang says something like, Have, haven't I killed you before? And apparently he also says later, I will kill you. Oh. He's just about doing a big kill. Doing a big kill, sure. It seems like he's the Thanos, like it's been confirmed yeah, that right. Kang is big Thanos. In a way... Thanos didn't really make a significant appearance in the previous phases of the Marvel Universe until Infinity War, really. Yeah, he was like hinted at and you saw he turned around and went, hello. Yeah, yeah, hello. Times, yeah. But uh, mm. no, you're right. Mm. Yeah, and He only... didn't really make a physical appearance or interact with anybody really. Until the end of phase one. Yeah. At the end of the Avengers. Yeah, but then he didn't really like, we didn't see him as a, like a real presence with no, a real background and interacting with people until Infinity War when he's beating up the Hulk. Yeah, so. we also like it's. I think there's going to be multiple Kang people showing up, so they might even kill this one. Yeah, maybe, and sure. it won't really matter because there's just a bunch of him. And isn't there like a Council of Kangs as well in the comics? I uh, wouldn't surprise there's me. Like a bunch, and then and there's also the version from the, who ruled over Egypt was the one from. Oh, Immortus, sure, yeah. Yeah, they're all eggs. <laughs> they're all mates, all the same yeah. guy or whatever. Wait, no, that wasn't Immortus. That's a different guy. Yeah. Ramatut. Yeah, one of them. Mm. That's great stuff. They could tie that with Moon Knight, but they probably won't. I think, was he in Moon Knight? I don't I think, think they so. They hinted at it in something. Maybe. I think it might have been hinted at in Loki. Like we saw like a pyramid or a okay. big statue or something. Right. And, yeah, anyway. Uh, good. That is good. Apparently, apparently it looks great as well, like a visually striking film, Mason. Oh my goodness. Uh, then we get uh, Secret Invasion, spring of 2023. Uh, Kobe Smulders, who returns as Maria Hill, says, it's an exciting thriller. You're never going to know who people are. Are they a Skrull? <laughs> great question. I mean, it's either yes or no, Kobe Smulders. <laughs> There's no maybes here. Yeah. I mean, they are all maybes, but... They're all maybes. They're all yeah. maybes. Until you know. Until you know, then it's yeah. a yes or a no. Apparently Nick Fury is called back to Earth and he's mad about it because mm. there's a secret invasion. I never even got to see what I was doing in space, quite frankly. Ah, uh, what was I up to? Um, secret stuff. I'll never tell. Uh, Rhodey's in it, mm-hmm. apparently. Okay. Talos is in it. Mm. Who is... Um, who's he again? He's uh, um, Mendo. Mendo, that's right, mm. yeah. Olivia Coleman is in it as a good person, apparently. Oh, Olivia Coleman is a good person. Yeah. <laughs> or a Skrull. And also, it just made, like, seeing Rhodey in this made me think. Is he a Skrull? Well, that and where's Armor Wars? That's a good There's no good, Armor Wars in this there's list. There's no Armor Wars, it's true. Explain it to me, Mason. Uh, they forgot to put it on the, the PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah. It could be worked into the Riri Williams series as well. Maybe, sure. Yeah. We'll talk about it in a Maybe bit. they went. Maybe they saw that graphic from a few weeks ago and went, wow, we've put out a lot of stuff. This is too much. Maybe we should pare down the stuff a Let's bit. Let's quietly kill something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it because of the long-running rumour that Rhodey might be a Skrull? Maybe. They need some time to uh, sort of... Why would they make him a Skrull, though? Like, what would be the point? It'd be fun. Fun surprise. It'd surprise you. It'd make you look like a fool. <laughs> You've always been Because I've saying, been adamantly... You've been adamantly saying... From day yeah, yeah. one. Yeah. Ever since Terrence Howard... That's true. ...first appeared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not going to, if that is the case, they're not going to use it as some kind of explainer for why he looks different, I assume. No, I, you you would hope not. Because then he would have to have mind powers to trick people that he looks different or whatever. Yes. So, yeah, there you go. We also got a look and the cast came out for the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, mm. Mason. Including, is this correct, Maria Bakalova as Cosmo, the, the, sp- the Russian space the dog? The Russian space dog. Correct. Wow. Uh, for those people who don't know, she, she's in latest Borat. She's she Borat's daughter. Borat. James Gunn also came out and said this is the end of these characters. and They're all going to explode in space, he said. He says some stories have to end doesn't mean everyone dies. Oh, that makes me think they're all going to die. Yeah. Also, the trailer was set to uh, Flaming Lips, Do You Realise? Okay, sure. Like uh, we that see that Gamora's back leading the Ravagers. We saw Adam Warlock. There's Baby Rocket. Apparently this is going to explore a lot of the, the origin of that character and how James Gunn's like he's the saddest person in the MCU. So, <laughs> uh, and Chuck Woody... Iwuji, uh, who's from um, Peacemaker. Oh, yes. He's what the guy who leads the Peacemaker team in that. He, he's going to be the high evolutionary. And he came out. He's like, I'm also in a costume just like That's The Rock. Right. 
And he said, I can't wait to dissect all of you and see what I learn, Mason. James, would you like to know about some of the or- – I'll, I'll read you the first couple of paragraphs of the biography of the high evolution. I want to know everything about this. Okay. <clears throat> Herbert Wyndham was born in Manchester, England. While a student at Oxford in the 1930s, he took an interest in the work of genetic biologist Nathaniel Ex- Essex. Okay. Mr. Sinister and began experimenting with genetic manipulation, building a machine that he called the Genetic Accelerator, with which he attempted to evolve the rats in his mother's London basement. While attending a genetics conference in Geneva, Wyndham was approached by a mysterious man who was in truth the outcast inhuman geneticist Fader, who handed him his papers containing blueprints for cracking the genetic code, something blah, 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 blah. Um, He finally succeeded in evolving his pet Dalmatian Dempsey into a humanoid life form with the intelligence of a chimpanzee. However, Dempsey was shot by poachers and Wyndham realised that such creatures as he would create would have no place in the human world. In partnership with scientist Jonathan Drew, father of Jessica Drew. In partnership, Drew, like, it's a, yeah, like it's a collab. Wyndham moved, his experience, his, he, Wyndham moved his experiments to the seclusion of Wondergore Mountain in the small Balkan nation of Transia. Discovery of uranium on the land provided vast funding and they bought more land. Drew's daughter, Jonathan Drew's daughter fell ill from uranium poisoning and was placed in a suspended animation to save her life. Subsequently, Drew's wife was attacked and killed by a werewolf. <laughs> Russoff himself, victim of a family curse. Drew left one to go, uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's just nonsense. Then joined in his work by research assistant Miles Warren, who became the Jackal. So, so he's a character I'm not overly familiar with. I remember him in the He's going to invent Rocket, right? That's what this is. Because he's genetic geneticist. And oh, in the past, do you think? I assume. Yeah, maybe. Because he's all yeah. about dissecting and... Changing mm. animals and yeah, Dalmatians but this what I love about it, people just read his Wikipedia page. No. He's a character that I that I was sort of tangentially aware of from the eighties, like he would pop up occasionally. But there's just werewolves and uh, somebody gets possessed by a ghost, <laughs> uh, malevolent elder god Chthon, anyway, and so on and so forth. He's a he's a mad evolutionary guy. He sounds amazing. Yeah, he sounds cool. I think you like him. Yeah, I like him. I think he's cool. Great, that's really good. Mm. So uh, what else have we got here from that particular panel? Yeah, everyone was all emotional and like, oh, it's the end of an era. Uh, you know, how yeah, people yeah, do. Sure, sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Thank you, James Garner, uh, all of those <laughs> things. They're good movies. So mm. that's uh, – I thought from what I saw of the – there's a I saw like four seconds of footage that was like leaked on Twitter and it, it looked – you saw a little baby rocket and oh, he's, yes. a, he's a little raccoon oh. and he's getting grabbed out of a little raccoon hole. Great. And then he's, he's going to – they're going to turn him into a whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, into a whatever, Mason. Mm. So he's an Earth raccoon, interesting. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Another thing they talked about a little bit more was Daredevil Born Again. Yes. I guess it's called Born Again, Mason, because it's the name of the comic and also because it's like they're rebooting the character. They've done it. Double meaning. Well done. Here's something that's going to blow your mind. Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio will return. Ah, my mind. We get ready for this. Poop. It's too late. 18 episodes. It's a lot of episodes, isn't it? Even if they're 30 minutes, that's very long. Yeah. And they're not going to be 30 minutes, right? Presumably. Maybe they're trying out a new format. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's a sitcom. That's really long. Mm. I I don't know. Are you sure you haven't misread it and it isn't Daredevil, Bjorn again, and he and uh, um, the Kingpin have joined some sort of ABBA tribute act? Or And it's a sitcom about that? Or he's in a baby Bjorn on the front of Kingpin? Maybe. Mm. Mm. It's a lot of things to think about. Isn't it, though? A lot of people say things and then we think about them. I don't think about anything. Oh, when I, when I read out that list before, I think I missed a few there as well. Captain America New World Order. Did I mention that? You did so That's going to be the Anthony Mackie one. And then there's the Thunderbolts movie. Yes. Which presumably is going to be led by Allegra De Fontaine. De Fontaine yeah. And then it's all the, all the evil Avengers all the evil of Avengers. sorts. Yeah. I'd imagine. They're all, the, all the evil and young Avengers that aren't going to the young Avengers. Exactly. Yeah. Let's talk some Phase 6, Mason. Okay. Now, you've noticed when looking at the sheet, a lot of big gaps. There are some There's big a few gaps. things they confirmed. Fantastic Four has been officially announced to release on November 8th, 2024, which will kick off Phase 6. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. Bunch, of ba- bunch of gaps, bunch of gaps, ba- bunch of gaps, bunch of gaps, Mason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then in May 2025, a, a mere three years from now, oh, Mason. Oh, so soon. Avengers the Kang Dynasty, mm. same year. November, Avengers Secret Wars. Sounds to me like they're going to do a big time Infinity War Endgame uh, big finale for this yes. phase again. And then they're going to get everybody back together in Secret Wars, like all the multiverse stuff is going to come together and yeah, Tobey Maguire yeah. and everything. And Do you going... feel now are you like, okay, this is where it's going? We, yeah, we, we, it's always going to be multiverse stuff. Do you feel more stuff. secure and, and cosy? No, now, you know? it's, I mean, I, you're, I'm, still, you're still running in fear? I'm still mad. Mm. I don't know what about. I guess. I'm just feeling a lot of emotions. Yes. This idea to release two Avengers movies in the same year, though, uh-huh. there's just something about like 
if it was like November and then July, uh-huh. you know, would it still be like that rough amount of time in between? But just seeing them in the same year feels like a really big gamble to put, you know, two giant movies yeah, right. back to back. I don't know. What do you think? But maybe they're like, maybe they think that the world has become desensitized to Marvel spectacle and they're like, we have to ramp it up. Double we were Marvel. always, be, we've always. This is be- like the year of the Matrix, Mason. Yeah. When they had two Matrix movies in the one year. Well, how far apart were Endgame and Infinity War? A year. They were a year. Yeah. Okay, right. So, hmm. yeah, I mean, it's what's May to November. What's that, six months or whatever? Sure. I don't know. I don't know time. You don't it's know time. time. It's nothing. Mm-hmm. So does that mean, so presumably the Kang Dynasty. Does the Kang Dynasty mean there's multiple Kangs? Ah, uh, great question. I, I mean, it, it, maybe. It could, be, it could be, as we mentioned, the Immortus Kang, Ramatut, all the, maybe, sure. Into the Kangiverse? Do you think we're going to do, yeah, maybe it's into the Kangiverse. Mm. Do you think we're going to do maybe more of a, it, it could be more of a kind of decade spanning thing where we see far into the future. That'd be you know. cool. Yeah, that would yeah. be cool. You know, I like that. And we see, you know, he, uh, Kang and he's taking he's, he takes over the world for a thousand years or something like that, and then the heroes have to go back in time. And now they wouldn't do that again, would they? But they already did that. They yeah, you're right. That, yeah. Do you think they're going to do like that Secret Wars Battle Planet thing where they all go that have a big punch up? Yep. And what are the chances do you think that like a version of Steve Rogers and Tony Stark will turn up? Very, very good. But also, <laughs> you can't really bring them back and have them like save the day because they haven't been here. That's true. It would be a really difficult to get thing to get right because it's yeah. not none of this is their story anymore. Mm. That's they have to turn up as like additional like support and go, yeah, you can do it. Mm. Go get them. Whoever the new characters are, Doctor Strange, yeah, we yeah, go yeah, get yeah, them yeah. with Captain Marvel or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I like the logos. I like the look. <laughs> Great. So that would be the end of this era of Marvel then. Yeah. So that's, that's three phases just kind of smooshed together. They've done it again, James. Well, they haven't done anything yet, Mason, except for that's the true. current phases. Yeah, that's true. But, of course, it ended with the film that's going to cap off phase four, which is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I was going to say Willy Lumpkin Origins. <laughs> <laughs> How did he get that? Thing and whatever. Mm-hmm. I've, I've also got a Fantastic Four scoop, which I want to talk oh my about goodness, after okay. this. But um, there's No Woman, No Cry. Yes. Uh, he's playing a cover. And we see, it was confirmed that uh, Michaela Cole from I Will Destroy You is going to be Anika, who is a combat instructor for the Dora Milaje. She's going to be in this as well. Okay, we great. got confirmation and we see Namor. He's mm, back. Good, he's like, yeah. I'm an underwater person and I've got some blue people with me. Mm-hmm, sure. going to do a big Wakanda battle. Yes. This looks amazing it does though, look right? amazing, yeah. It looks incredible. Mm. Uh, we see Dominic Thorne's Riri Williams. Yes. Uh, banging out a bloody Iron Man suit that's or whatever. That's true, yeah. And that's good stuff. We see Martin Freeman. Do we? As, as Agent Ross. He's got yeah. his sunglasses on. He's like, what the, what the dickens is going on in here? I'm out of my depth yet again. Oh, boy. Why, Why do, do they, they keep, keep assigning this? me to this? <laughs> I don't want to be here. I'm just a regular man. And it seems as if uh, they don't really – they don't talk about what happened to T'Challa. To, to yes. But there, it addresses in the trailer that he's gone and Angela Bassett, who plays his mother, is queen again and she's bloody jack of it, mate. She's absolutely jack of it. Yeah, I, I love that that – she has to, you know, kind of step back into this role just by just absolute tragedy. And she now yeah, she has, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I just, honestly, I thought all of this looked really, really great. And, of course, at the end we see somebody in a Black Panther suit. That's true. We can't see who. Man or woman, we don't know. We do not know. But what we do know, Mason and I determined that it's not Winston Duke. He'd be too big. He'd be too big. It's Booty's not too him. Big. But it's uh, who you think it's going to be? Great question. Uh, I don't know. I want multiple Black Panthers. Yeah, That's yeah, what uh, I want. Mm-hmm. But I don't know who that one is particularly. I like. I don't know. I, I mean, Shuri would be the obvious one, I guess. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, you having a skim through? Now? I'm having a quick skim through. Yeah, mm. it's a heart, Mason. She knocks out a heart of Ironheart. Oh, that's true. She does. Yes. Yeah. Mm. That this looks awesome. Mm. And uh, one of the things that we thought might have been making an appearance in this is Doctor Doom. And speaking of, here's a Weekly Planet exclusive potentially oh, Mason. Go on. Uh, from the source you were telling about the Daredevil thing, Uh-oh. which turned out to be true. You're welcome, everybody. Do you think that maybe they're not setting you up for a big a big failure? I else? hope so. That would be yeah, great. It's be a great. big prank. Like a bunch of a bunch of really accurate scoops, <laughs> and at the end we stake our reputations on a big thing, and it turns out to be not even close. Yeah. So apparently Doctor Doom, the casting, is a lock. Oh, like it's they done. Have a person okay. in, in mind. And I right. said is there a chance that it's Anthony Starr? Because it's rumored that he's oh. they're circling him for a role. Okay. And it, this person was like, I couldn't say I don't I don't know. So for sure. For sure, 100%. 100%. He'd be a good Doctor Doom. Yeah. But 
But the other thing is, but does he? Would he want to do a, a villainous role so soon? Put on a mask. When it's he's fine. Still, I guess that's true. Yeah. Do the voice. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> but the other thing is, they haven't nailed down the casting of the Fantastic Four. Right. There was a rumor that Jason Segel this week was going to be the thing in She Hulk, uh-huh, maybe. Sure. But the thing is, oh, so that we get we get the rest of the cast of How I Met Your Mother. Why not? Yeah. But the thing is, whatever their name, whatever are. their name, Josh, Ooh, something, Josh something, Alison Hannigan, Kobe Smulders, Doogie Houses, yes. nailed it, and Doogie Houser. That's oh, it. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, all great. of them. Okay. But you couldn't if if they haven't locked down the casting, you can't bring out two of the Fantastic Four. No, that's true. You need, yes. to, you need to have yeah. them all, and I think they're probably going to do it at D23. Yeah, right. So that's apparently where we're at with okay. the Fantastic Four as of right now. It's it. not it's not locked in yet. James, I love it. I love it too. Anyways, big woos from all of this. Woo! This is great. Mm. Big, big, you know, there were some big announcements. They showed some really good footage, you know, and they did the thing where the people who were there – Get some bonus stuff, and people at home get some stuff as well. What did we get? We got the the, the Black Panther trailer and the Shield trailer. Oh, I trailer. meant like like swag and stuff. Oh, you get the Infinity Gauntlet thing. Oh, nice, that's made, great. The twenty five million dollars. Right, Infinity I feel I'm Gauntlet. entitled to it actually. Yeah. So, but yeah. no, this is. This I've been is really saying cool. that stupid thing at the end of all these podcasts. I feel they should send me a free one. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. How do you feel though now that like there's more of a rudder on this, and you know, I know you asked me the question. But I does did. It make, I, does it make you feel, I feel better? Feel more cozy. Yes, yeah? I can sleep at night finally. Oh, good. Now that I know, is that a genuine thing, or are you just like, yeah? No, I feel. Yeah, I. I uh, now that they've straightened out a few things. Yeah, I feel more comfortable, and also, I'm liking the look of that She-Hulk show. So looking really good. Looking fun, and it might be the next thing potentially, or maybe. Mm-hmm. All right, Mason. Do you know what it's time for? It's time for what we're reading. What are we going to read though? What are we going to read? All right, here we go. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> now, Mason, we were supposed to have a guest this week, weren't we? We were going to do a bonus segment, but we couldn't, couldn't line it up quite, quite make it happen. But I was going to, uh, we decided, yeah. in lieu of that, mm. we would promote her show because right. of, this segment of the show is brought to you by Michelle Brazier. That's right. And her show, Average Bear, which she, she is doing at the Edinburgh Fringe through the month of August. So you might have uh, seen uh, Michelle Brazier on Auntie Donna's YouTube channel yep. uh, or as part of Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun. You might have seen her. Uh, she's had many funny podcast appearances. Uh, you might have uh, even seen her on Sean McCall's Mad as Hell. If you've got, maybe if you're in the UK, you've got a VPN, you might want to check that so out. Just say hello, what's this? Exactly. And you might be like, well, what else does Michelle Brazier do? What's she doing in her spare time? I like time? the song that she does. You can see it on YouTube where she talks about how she wanted to have sex with the cartoon version of Aladdin. And I'm like, that's interesting. I wonder what she thinks about... <laughs> You know, because there's a live action version and she specifies in the song that, no, not that version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cartoon animated yeah. version. So it yeah. turns out in a spare time, Michelle Brazier is an award-winning uh, uh, musical comedian. Who and knew? When, and when I say award-winning, I mean like she's probably won some awards I mean, while we've been saying this. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Incredible. She is touring her show Average Bear, uh, which I saw uh, at Melbourne International Comedy Festival last year. Very funny, like one of the best shows of the festival. And throughout the month of August, she'll be in the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. There's a million shows there. Damn. If you want to see it from August... 3rd to August 28th, uh, she's at the Assembly George Square in the box. I don't know what that means. Uh, uh, it means everything. Yeah. Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022, 6.25pm to Sunday, August 28th. Uh, so people should definitely check that out, I think. Can't recommend highly enough yeah, Mason. That's right. Uh, again, just Google her name. There's a bunch of stuff. So much She did stuff. that. She wrote the incredible Auntie Donna sketch about just one of the boys as well. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Just, yeah, absolutely, if you're in the area, check it out. If you're looking for some some good comedy, Mason, uh, looking for some fresh comedy, Mason. Good fresh comedy. Then this is where it's at. Mm, yeah. Now, Mason. Go on. What else have we been reading this week? Well, I watched uh, The Grey Man. Oh, yeah. Netflix, you were telling me Grey before Man. we started recording mm-hmm. that you you saw it. I did see it. I you watched like, the whole thing. Huh, I, watched I was gripped <laughs> by the movie The Grey Man, the Russo brothers, The Grey Man, based on a book, I think. Uh, starring Ryan Gosling and Chris mm. Evans and Anna Diamas and uh, Billy Bob Thornton yes, yes. and others. That's true. I mean, it's kind of fun. <laughs> this movie that cost $200 million, the most expensive production Netflix has ever put together. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's like. And it's, we also read this week that Netflix lost a million subscribers. They sure did, yeah. Yeah. Um, That's not very good. It's it's just, it's, it's pretty fun. And, you know, uh, Ryan Gosling's good and. and Chris Evans is, you know, he's decided to throw up his typecasting by, you know, his Captain America typecasting by just being a horrible man, playing the most awful characters he can he can find, and yeah. I, you know that's kind of fun. 
Uh, but you will not be surprised by any aspect of this. I, uh, it feels like a, bo- a thriller you buy at the airport, like yeah. a book. And uh, and then don't read. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it came out. There's obviously. also a tram chase in it. And James, let me tell you, some of the technical aspects of it are very. They don't use the sand brake? They don't. I mean, <laughs> at one point you see the tram go past when all its doors are open and you're like, well, how did, does he know where the override switch is for the doors? You know? Is he a tram driver? Maybe he was at some point. Oh, okay. The grey man. Yes. Who's the grey man in it? Ryan Gosling is the grey yeah. man. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was out, you know, on Friday night. Go and on. I just went, I, I'm, I'm not, I just don't think I will. <laughs> well, it's going to be there forever, so don't worry Yeah, about exactly. It. I'll get around to it eventually, mm-hmm. I guess. Is it long? I don't know. That's great. Isn't it though? Yeah. When mm. you just lose track of time because you're lost in a you're great lost movie. In, I mean, I didn't switch it off. I wasn't like, this is horrible and I will. I, I, Good performances. Like it's fun-ish. Like I the mean, people in it. Yeah. <sighs> it's kind of fun, I guess. Kind I don't know. Fun. But that's not the thing you should say about a $200 million movie with, with A-list talent. It, directed you know? by yeah, you know? the Russo brothers. It's kind of insane. Mm. I, um, I started reading Radio. Oh, it does have. Mm. Uh, an appearance from patron saint of the podcast, Callum Mulvey. He's Perfect. In the, he's in the first five minutes. I love it. Mm-hmm. Is he the grey man? No. Oh, he's a he's a grey man of sorts. I knew it. Mm. I didn't, okay. but I knew it. Now you're going to say you've started reading Radiant Black. I started Black. Radiant Black. Yeah, it's fun. It's like what if Invincible was older and a loser? Kind yeah, of. sure. Yeah. I mean, he's not, he's like a writer and he has to go back. Oh, so a loser. And a loser, yeah. And yeah. he has to, um, and he gets a, a, a magic like Power Rangers kind of suit. Yeah. And so far, a lot of fun. But the other thing, I that got derailed this week. Because uh, I've started watching the Hobbit trilogy for Caravan of Garbage mm. for when we return. Yes. Boy, Mason. Boy, it sure is long, isn't it? Boy, I, I also watched that, yes. how long that first movie is at the very least. Well, I had not. I've only, Of the Hobbit trilogy, oh, I've seen only it, seen the third yeah. one. Yeah. For whatever reason, I jumped in at the third one. So I haven't seen the first two. So I watched the first one, and you are right, it is long. <laughs> sure is long. <laughs> but it, people are in it. And all People the dwarves are definitely are, in it. The dwarves are running about. Yes. It's really crisp and clear so you can see everybody's wig because of the high mm. frame rate that's filmed in. You can see all the like the glue on their head and the makeup. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's uh anyway, we'll talk about that. That'll be the first thing we do after we get back from break. Yes. Uh but a fascinating uh journey into just a series of movies that nobody wanted to make or be in. It seems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, should we move to the next segment of the we show? Should. Mason. It's called the letters segment. And it is begun with a letters theme, which I play from my phone. I search for it on YouTube and I find it. Yep. And I turn the volume off my phone and then I click the YouTube video in question and the theme is there. That's right. The classic one was oh, letters, oh letters, we love you. So He's done it. I'll do that. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. Mason coming in hot with that letters theme. Mm. Uh, if you do want to reach the show, remember we are taking a break, but hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Email and, in. We'll get to it when we get there. Or weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Have you got a letter that you can tell me I about? Do. This is from Joe. Hello, Joe. Shout out for my soon-to-be wife. <gasps> Hi, James and Mason. Huge fan of the show and looking forward to listening to the pod every week. Just wondering if you could give a shout-out to my wonderful fiance Charlotte. We're getting married next Saturday, the 23rd. So Whoa, they're married now. Oh, they've done it already. So this should be shout-out to my wife. Yep. Not soon to be wife. My wife. And shout out to my wonderful wife. So he's really my messed wonderful up here. Wife. If the if the if the marriage is going to anything like this, I mean, even even if we even went through, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's a disaster. Um, she's put in a tremendous amount organi- tre- tremendous amount of work organizing the wedding. She's also a big fan of you guys. We often sit down and binge through old episodes of Caravan of Garbage. Big love to Melbourne. Also, as it's where we spent the first year of our relationship. Delightful. Cheers, guys. If you're ever in England, hit us up for a beer. That's from Joe. Hit you around the head with a beer. That's great, though. Congratulations. Yeah. Really good stuff. If it went through, which, of course, it did, Mason. Yes. Because otherwise there'd be a follow-up email that says, do not read that email. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does, yeah. <laughs> we both fell in the cake and not in a fun <laughs> way. Oh, no, we did that thing where, like, I, I did that thing where I was like, I tried, I went to feed her the cake. Yeah. And I thought it would be really funny. And she's like, I've had enough of this. And nobody likes that. Yeah. You know when people I'm do leaving. that? Nobody seems to yeah, enjoy it. Don't do true. it. Mm. Wow, amazing stuff. Yeah. Uh, I've got a tweet here, Mason. It's, it's from Isaac who says, Marvel's SDCC absolutely wiped DCs. Do you think, though, Marvel is rushing through the multiverse saga? Now, it's funny he says that because two Avengers films in one year, I saw this tweet from John Bridges. This will, they will end phase six in 2025. The Infinity Saga was 10 years long. The multiverse saga will be four years long. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that short because I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, what, 2019? When did yeah, this yeah, start? Yeah, yeah. But uh-huh. it, yeah, it, it started in 2021. 
And also pandemic, etc. Yeah. You know what wouldn't shock God, me at all? God, they are flying through this. It wouldn't shock me at all if Feige is planning his retirement and he's like, I'm going to get everything, all the good stuff out before I go and yeah. then good luck then to everybody Good luck, else. idiots. Yeah. Yeah. I've not, I, I feel that. Like, you know, there's. I think there might – years ago I read an Onion article and it was about – the world is running out of nostalgia. Oh yeah, like we have. So was it nostalgia for nostalgia? Was that? The, yeah, something yeah. like that. Well, like you know, suddenly we're we're dressing in seventies fashions, then eighties fashions, then nineties fashions, and to that, like we're we're running out rapidly. Yeah, it feels to me like all the good stories of the Marvel universe, the comic book universe, are just being really consumed at a like an incredible rate. Yeah, and soon there will be none, mm. and they're just, and then they're just going to have to be like, oh, you know, you all the work for hire guys, can you give us some more iconic yeah. storylines? And they're going to be like. No, because you, you you're gonna you're gonna, you don't pay you're gonna pay us a thousand dollars for a for a billion dollar movie, are you? And it will be like they'll be doing Infinity War, and then they'll do like Infinity War two, not that, but do you know what I mean? Like they'll bring things back. Like there was a Secret Wars two, two yeah. You know, so they even in comics they go back to these ideas. So it's not like in the next phase they can be like Secret Wars two, yeah. Or maybe they can, Mason. Mm. Yeah, that's. Four years, that's, yeah, that's not a long time. But also, like, the sheer amount of content Mm -hmm. is more than the 10 years, obviously. But you do need that, I feel, you need that breathing room, you know? You need characters to, you know, to be established and, you know, actors kind of grow and become beloved and all Mm. of these things. And, yeah, you kind of run the risk of just burying everybody in this stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, but I think he's going to – I honestly think Feige is going to be like, i got to knock out all the good stuff before I go. Before I take over Star Wars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you got next, Mason? This is from, uh, this is from Joshua. Met a wacker to do in the wild. Oh, what? Dear James and Mason, I've been listening to the pod for about seven years now. Just wanted to let you know that you've always brightened my Monday morning commute to work and we're, school. We're, we're Your banter nine, never fails to cheer me up. I know. We've been doing it for nine years. Yeah, that's weird, right? Maybe yeah. He's like, I had a two-year period where I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> Right in the middle. Me too. (laughs) Uh, Earlier today, I was serving a couple of customers at the cinema I work at, and the woman was wearing a Weekly Planet shirt. I asked them if they were fans, and they said they were, and they were going to watch Elvis, and they find your voices very soothing. Really? Anyway, can you give us a can you our give a voices? Sh- yeah, can you give a I, shout out to the woman and her boyfriend for being great customers and not ordering something annoying to make? Like Josh what? from England. What's something annoying? Uh, at a cinema. Yeah, that pizza that you make people make. Yeah, that you. one. Yeah, yeah. The thing that you always get. Exactly the thing that I get every single time. Um, <laughs> popcorn. Um, with a choc top swirled in it. That's easy. No, it'll be very difficult. Is that yeah. that? Yeah, maybe. Like you're maybe making a candy true, yeah. floss thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is from Ben Mason. Oh. Who says, with the lackluster DC panel at SDCC, do you think DC are saving material for the fandom? Yeah, I mean, they'd have to be. <laughs> sure, yeah. Because, I mean, yes. Mm, maybe. <laughs> Boy. Do Boy, they know, howdy. though? Because I was pretty sure that they would have figured it out by the time the panel started. Yes. But they didn't. Mm-hmm. They just, just I don't know, it just feels like why go? <laughs> if they weren't going to bring Henry Cavill. Yeah, true, least, true. You know, why do Do you think it? they should have cancelled? They yes. Should have, they should have passively, <laughs> aggressively just had one guy show up. Well, I, hello, I have a prepared statement uh, from DC. Um, Cavill cancelled, so we're not doing this anymore. It's Cavill's fault. <laughs> And by this we mean movies. Yeah, we're doing fracking. Whatever that joke said that you said last week. Yeah, we're doing fracking now. <laughs> Boy, got any more before no, that's we? The uh... whole, that's the whole show, James. Wow, what do you think about that. It doesn't feel like we're having a break. You know what I mean? What do you mean? We are having. This we're is the last having a break for a that's month. True, yeah. yeah, wow. That's right. Uh, well, maybe we'll be back in two weeks. Maybe we'll be jonesing for some more podcasting. It's true. But you'll I be hope, away, sir. Well, I hope I don't settle into like, ah, oh, I'm just not not going to work. Not working's great. I'll just do that. Sure. Let me tell you, James, not working is great. I agree. Yeah. Listen, folks, thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you for sticking around for the next month. Yeah. Uh, remember, bonus stuff coming out at bigsandwich.co. And also, huge back catalogue already. You can That's sign true. up right now. There's and hopefully we will be able to, be able to put some stuff, stuff on the free feed as well from that yes. back catalogue. But, folks, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for telling your friends about the podcast. Thank you for leaving a five-star review on your podcast catcher of choice. That's how we get new listeners. James, you got any reviews there? Got a couple right here, Mason. This one says, it's just the one planet, actually. Was hoping for a new planet each week, but this is still pretty good. That's from July 6th. 2011, Wednesday, 10.32 p.m. That's a five-star review you can just do in app. That's terrific. So did this person, Derek, uh, underscore 5150, who says, be warned that they do have Aussie accents. If you listen too much, you might start calling your friends mates and become irresistible to potential suitors. Be warned. Yeah. My goodness. 
Nobody cares about Australian accents here, though, do they? Absolutely if anything, they're not. not Australian enough. That's what we should. Someone yeah. like you, bloody what's good? You bloody, I'll bloody <laughs> punch you in the head, mate. That's exactly right, yeah. folks. If you want to get into contact with us, even though we're on break, you can go to weeklyplanetpod yeah. at gmail dot com, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates. Facebook group that might also be shutting down, but you can also go to the various subgroups that are part so of it. many, so many subgroups. There's also they're going to be pinned to the top. Mm. Also, we're going to run until everything's going to run until first of September. So there's going to be videos this week. There's an Alien mm. versus Predator video and a bunch nice. of other stuff. Yeah, uh, folks, you can also go to the uh, Weekly Planet uh, subreddit and Discord. Um, also, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You can chuck in a buck if you wish. You can also go to bigsandwich.co, as previously mentioned, for nine US dollars per month. All sorts of uh, bonus content. You want to follow me, you can go to Wikipedia Brown on uh, Twitter and uh, Nick Mesa on Instagram. You can follow James at Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. You can also follow our pal Rob Collings at Raw Collings on Twitter and at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. That's where you get all your Weekly Planet updates. He'll, he'll let you know when we're back. I for will. Sure. Uh, and folks, you can also get t-shirts at tpublic.com. Just search for The Weekly Planet. And thank you to The Brute and The Basilisk and rack them for all musical themes. That's the show. We'll see you in a month. I also do want to mention Kevin Feige has said that the Russo brothers will not be directing the next Avengers films. After the disaster that was The Grey Man, he said. (laughs) I mean, it wasn't bad. I sort of had fun. Me, Kevin Feige, I sort of enjoyed it. But, you know, it was $200 million and where did all the money go? Thank God it wasn't my money. And also he said, I found some inaccuracies in the tram chase. (laughs) Wow, you sounds like you you know you share a lot of things in common. I just want to also say I really appreciate people listening and supporting this break. Yeah, it just it, it means a lot to me that everybody's just like cool. You should do that. Yeah, instead of being like give us content. That's right, idiots. And we appreciate it. When we come back, you will also come back. Yes, that's we, we that's, appreciate that, and we live in fear that you in won't. advance. So you we could. we appreciate it. Yeah, that's right. Because that will happen. Mm. Thanks, everyone. Grab that, Jeremy, guys. We'll see you in one month's time. But videos this week. Yeah, videos also. Goodbye. Bye.